Adam, we've got some exciting news about the sponsors. We have, we? but I've forgot what it is. Can you remind me? It's manscaped.com. They've leveled up and they're now our main podcast sponsor. Our official lead sponsor from now on, manscaped.com. Use our promo code WEIRD20 to get their products. This is now the Have A Word podcast brought to you by manscaped.com. They've been a long-time supporter of us. Please go and support them and make sure they keep supporting us forever. Promo code WEIRD20, manscaped.com. Enjoy this week's episode of the Have A Word podcast brought to you by manscaped.com. It's going to be a belter. Manscaped.com. Wag Wag Lids, before we start today's amazing episode of the Have A Word podcast, we need to tell you about our Patreon, which is the biggest Patreon in UK comedy. Yes, it is. Starts from just three quid a month. From just three quid a month, you get an extra episode every single week, exclusive to Patreons, which is up to 90 minutes long. You get 48 hours early access to these public episodes and access to the entire Patreon back catalogue, which goes all the way back to last summer. And the money we make from the Patreon, we put back into the Patreon. We've been making Patreon specials. These are so popular. They include the ghost hunt, the live show. We've got more in the pipeline. But the big ones are the lockdown lock-ins where we got shit-faced in this studio, recorded it all, and turned out some amazing podcasts. They're, they're amazing, the lockdown lock-ins, and we're signing up for alone. But on top of everything we've already said, you get discounts on merch and early access to live show tickets, which is a big one, because the live Have A Word shows, they sell out almost immediately on Patreon every single time. And on top of that, me and Dan are going on tour, and every time we add a new date, Patreons get access to it first. I'm going on tour from February. Dan's on tour from September next year. You can get tickets for my tour at adamroad.co.uk forward slash shows and Dan's tour at dannightingale.com. Sign up to the Patreon, £3 a month, the best deal in all of UK comedy. I think it's the best deal in worldwide Patreon. That's how far I'd go. Sign up, enjoy the episode. It's going to be a belter. Welcome to the Have A Word podcast brought to you by manscaped.com. Yeah, Barry, we've got a proper fucking sponsor. They're still hanging in as sponsor. Hanging in? They're fucking driving it home. Oh, right. Oh, they were taking us out, whining us, dining us, you know? We were a bit of a side bitch, you know? But now, oh, we've basically got keys. <laughs> right. Oh, yeah, we've left the toothbrush. Manscaped uh, are a proper sponsor now. They've upped the ante, so use code WORD20 at manscaped.com and sort your pubes out. How are you for general pub maintenance, Baz? Um, well, I told you the last time when I was on here as, as a guest that... That was ages ago. It was ages ago. If they've... I've forgotten it. That's all that counts. I've only just... I think... I, I'm not even sure I've caught up with me yet in my... Because of, in case you don't know, I listen to everything in order. Because he does of the everything OCD. In it. He does everything it's got in me order. Down. I still... Ha I've been on your Patreon. I think I was one of your day one patrons. I've never heard a Patreon exclusive yet. Because I've got to finish the normal ones in order, then I can go to the you've start. You've really fucked that up. Yeah, you need you've to slip. You need to slide them in. You you've fucked that up. You've you you think you're doing it in order, and you've actually actually got yourself out of sequence. Oh, don't say that because I'll have to start. <laughs> no, because because <laughs> you're gonna catch up publicly and then time travel to May 2020. Yeah, for the patrons. But we talk about public shit, you know, because it it's weekly, isn't it? You, you're organised and OCD enough that you could have worked that out and I slid should, them I in. I should have, yeah, I should have got it all in set. Uh, it's been a disaster. I'm, well, I might just, good. I might just have to suck it off. Barry's, <laughs> I might just knock right. it on the end. Lost the piece. What's, right. what's the other one? What's number two at the minute? James A. Caster. I'll start listening to him. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> By the way, James, we'd love to have you on. And uh, number two is not bad. Yeah, exactly. Just not number one. Like He's us. doing all right, isn't he? So thanks to everyone who voted for us in the Pub Bible Awards. That was a very nice win. Yeah. Just just an amazing shout to all of the lids and all of the fucking ultras. Yes. Um, every time an award was announced on the Pod Bible Twitter thread, it was like, well, well done to James Acast, who's won the best music one. Seven likes, one retweet. Well done to, I don't know, just all of the other winners. And there's some... Decent podcasts. Podcasts you know. And probably excellent podcasts with a decent fan base. And as soon as we won ours, 370 likes, 50 fucking retweets, because our lot are like, yeah, there's so much more involved. Thank you for voting. And um, it's a really nice win, that. I wish Adam was here to uh, 
fucking get aggressively happy with it. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, I'm 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 very happy for you. I saw it yesterday, and I was I was absolutely over the moon because I know how rabid your fan base is, and I, I don't know if I'm jumping, leg jugs. I don't know if I'm jumping the gun a little bit in talking about this. We may talk about it later, but there was something that happened just before Christmas. Uh, I did a tweet. Oh. I did a tweet. Now, for so, some people may not, I'm a very, very big fan of Cunt and the Gang. Yeah, are you listening to him in order? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I did. I, I honestly did listen to his I started with the Crying and Wanking trilogy and worked my way all the way up to the Has top. Has he got something called the Crying, the and, crying Wanking. and Wanking trilogy? I already yeah. love this guy. Um, <laughs> now, I'm a very very big fan of his and he obviously had an assault this is he did his second year assault on the chart because last year uh sorry the year before now he did boris johnson as a fucking cunt and then tried to get it to number one got it to number five and then suddenly announced to the fans you know what we're going to try again in 2021 and everyone went, yes, let's do it. Let's really do it properly this time. Let's really go for it. So, of course, it happened. Now, unfortunately, it turned out that some of my close associates in this room also... <laughs> Hello! <laughs> also... <laughs> decided out of nowhere to do an in-joke and try and get it to Christmas number one. And through a combination of some weird betting patterns and Adam's cocaine-like confidence... <laughs> <laughs> For a man who basically hasn't ever done drugs, my God, he just functions on this weird, like, do you know what? We're doing it. I'm fucking going number one, lad. And the betting was the thing that made me go, oh, God, we are going to do this. Well, that first day on iTunes as well, when we were third, fourth, and fifth. And I genuinely mm. saw Cunt and the Gang as an enemy yep. at first. I was like, ah, you've had yours. Don't do it again. Uh, it's pretty obvious. Why not do an in-joke that no one understands <laughs> and, a and a journalist from the BBC will be p p snippy about. But actually, when you reread it, you're like, yeah, I kind of see what you mean. Um, and uh, and then you tweeted about, come I, on, just as we launched our, like, you guess what we're doing? And then it was the same day, Barry. I, I did a tweet saying... Come on, everyone, get behind Cunt of the Gang. Let's get Cunt to the board. My, I mean, RIP notifications because I got a lot of uh, a lot of your fans. Uh, the word "rass" yeah, uh, appeared yeah, yeah. a lot on my time. Now, the but that thing doesn't count the same as in real life, you know. Like, w w I remember the first time I heard that Paul Smith bit about when he called his missus a rat. Right, and it made me go, whoo, whoo, whoo. oh, that's some salty shit. And then it became sort of part of the Northwest comedy vernacular almost, didn't it? Because a yeah. lot of, like Danny Mac was calling people rats. Adam and I started calling people rats. We've used it so much on this podcast that calling someone a rat is just basically a callback now. Yeah. It's almost part of our language. I use it in real life sometimes, like, oh yeah, they're a rat. And I see like, so I've said it like, about someone that we were slagging off or like bitching about. And my sister's gone, oh, oh. Because <laughs> you're like, oh yeah. Calling someone a rat. Calling to muggles go, oh, well, that's quite aggressive. And you're like, well, if you're part of our podcast world, that is airy fucking day. Well, the problem is, is that because of the, th the stuff I did with the Parapod and I was ob obviously, you know, appearing on this and being made, so, you know, I was plugging this as much as I could. So there's a crossover of fans. So I had people who were part of the Parapod who now are part of this, who were getting in touch with me going, yeah, you've dropped the ball there, lads. <laughs> and it's nah. like, oh, no. You were nah. saying that they know you're part of the family. They yeah, know, they, they know. know. But it, it was, because I started it. I saw it. I think and I then like, fucking Adam did it as well. I know. We all did it. We all, like, all got on it. Come yeah. on. <laughs> but if it, it, like, honestly, if you weren't one of ours, I think I'd just quietly be pissed off. Like, if it was one of them... You know, we haven't got a long shit list, but there's a few names on the shit list. If it was one of them, yeah. I wouldn't retweet. I wouldn't do anything. You'd just be like, oh, I'm just I'm just marking your name on the shit list in fucking Sharpie now. You're going in permanent. But because it was you, and I know a lot like you and like uh, you're part of the team. The thing was, though, and I'm not having a go at anyone for this, by the way, but there was a joke that was, because I was aware of it when I tweeted, and there was a follow-up joke going to be coming to that. So I tweeted about cunts thing, 
and then I was going to leave it until the night time, and then I was going to do a one for yours. And for your one, I was going to, I had a little picture made which, which said, do you want to vote for a song that hates a Tory? And then a picture and said, or do you, or do you want to buy a song that's sang by a Tory? <laughs> right? <laughs> to slam you. Lee isn't a Tory. My no, least, Dan. My <laughs> least favorite fucking jive. <laughs> I, I know, honestly, I I, there you. was a point a year ago when I was like, the nonce joke is getting a bit out of hand because I, I, I honestly was struggling to mention being a dad without Adam being like, fucking hell, lad, you was a nonce. And you're like, <laughs> yeah, if Adam can't dis- distinguish between the real world and how much we'd done that joke. So I basically said to Adam and Carl, we need to put that in the bin for a bit because I mentioned something about Etta and, and Adam was like, fucking hell. And he was like, he was reacting like I'm a sex offender. And you're like, if you have lost the reality of that, mm. what what's yeah. everyone else doing? And even recently, the nonce joke has been coming back because it's still funny. I still, I, it is funny. Like, like, and I've been doing it for ages. I literally walked around, I like walked around. I was on the circuit for years saying I look like a Danish sex offender. Had I've had a great time with that. Uh, even nonce <laughs> has made its way back. But when I get called a I know, fucking that's why I did it. Tory, I was like, it oh. pisses me off. <laughs> I would honestly rather everyone was like, yeah, Dan fucks kids. I'd be like, hey, it's part of the banter. <laughs> Dan votes Tory. I'm like, oh, that actually sort of like makes me feel a bit gippy <laughs> and genuinely furious. I don't, I can't deal with it. And also it's, it's Adam calling me Tory is super harsh. Like, lad, you're a fucking Tory. Your parents had two cars growing up. <laughs> fucking Tory. That is Tory. What though. did you have? A front fucking garden. Fucking Tory. Did you have a porch? Basically, Jacob Reese mug because I went skiing twice when I was a kid. Whoa. Fucking Tory. Did you have a chip pan? Yeah, of course we had a fucking ah, chip right, pan. Did right, you have a porch? Were... Yeah. Did you have a conservatory? <gasps> no. Okay, you're halfway there then. Yeah. But I'm a Lib Dem. <laughs> yeah. I take it. I take it. <laughs> It's the, it's just brutal. You don't ever tweet the top. Like, not you. You're my best mate. You're literally my best mate. Not just in comedy. You are actually one of my best mates. Don't you come at me with that Tory <laughs> shit. <laughs> well, thankfully, everybody jumped on me before I got a chance to do, to do it. So I was like, oh, well, I'll, I, I might just keep a little profile on Twitter for a bit. And then yeah, every, it was every, all in good form, everybody was changing their profile picture to the thing of um, the Ghostbuster logo with Boris Johnson. And to show support for the, for the single. And I was like, I might leave that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're a Ghostbuster from Harry Robinson in your picture still, aren't you? I'm what, say again? The Ghostbuster of you, yes. Harry, Harry Drew. Oh, my God. Yes. I um, love that. Yeah. So we had a guest booked in today, and obviously uh, COVID, although I think we all feel a little bit different about it. But in terms of like people getting it and being out of commission, we've lost some guests. We've got family members that have got it at the moment. Uh, Adam's died of it. He's dead. So he's oh, dead you haven't now. mentioned that, have you? Adam's dead. Oh, yeah, I just thought we'd... Because it's a comedy podcast, I didn't want to labour it, you know? Oh, whatever, yeah. But you've bounced there. back all right, haven't you? Oh, I'm sweet. You yes. had a bad morning yesterday, didn't yesterday, you? Yesterday, yeah. No. Oh, yeah, yeah, I yeah. Thought, I've got all the shoes. I'm going to sell them all. Yeah. Are we going to have the funeral at Pins? <laughs> Pit, on the roof, Pins. We have a show after. <laughs> we could probably buy Pins if we sell all of his fucking webs. <laughs> yeah. You do his funeral as a Patreon exclusive. <laughs> Absolutely. I am not. Do <laughs> I'd do the post-mortem as a fucking... <laughs> I'd cut the cut, cut the cut, cut him open. This is just for ten pound patrons. Liver. Are oh, you thought he could fly the plane on the way to New York? Ah, oh, have a go, lad. Just yeah, go I crashed it into that. the Pacific, yeah. as he would call it. <laughs> <laughs> go in the Pacific, lad. Yeah, Adam's dead. What did he say, Lassie? Like, I don't know how. God, he's in New York, by the way. He's just on his fucking holly bobs. Yeah, he's in New York and having a great time. I'm so chuffed. He's gone. Right now, that sounds eggy, and it absolutely isn't, because I, all joking aside, the level of hatred we have for the Tories, it's it like it spikes in Adam, doesn't it? Yeah. And he, uh, if he'd have had New York taken away from him by Boris Custard Tits Johnson, mm. the level of anger and upset uh, would have been, he'd, he's a pro. Every time Adam, people ask me what it's like podding with Adam. Sometimes behind the scenes, it's 
mental trying to get him to do stuff. He is basically admin. He's good too, so isn't he? Sometimes maybe good, sometimes, sometimes maybe shit. It's most of the time maybe shit. It's basically, he just coin flips whether he's going to do... But, but every time he turns up, all he tries to do is be funny. And it, it, when you're gigging with someone or working with someone or podcasting with someone, that's a fucking dream. He never misses an episode and he just turns up and he's funny. However, I wouldn't have enjoyed trying to get him in a, hey, let's have some fun. If yeah. he got his birthday trip, which includes his 30th birthday, taken away from him. It's uh, it's amazing that he's got to go. Because I also want to hear the stories. I can't wait for him to come back. He's, he's doing some American podcasts. He's doing gigs in America. I can't, like he uh, screenshotted his stage times for one of the Fuck comedy gigs me. he's doing at the weekend. 10 to 2 in the morning. He's doing 10 to 2. And they're like confirming it. Like, see you there. Could you get there 15 minutes before your stage time? You're like, really? I, I, that's unbelievable. Yeah. I would have to just go to sleep and just set my alarm and that'd be me up for the morning. Um, I can't wait for him to come back. Have you ever... Been... I'm so chuffed he got to go though. Not yeah. like all jokes. And I get to pod with you, which is a fucking touch. Have you ever been to a comedy club in New York? Uh, I've never been to New York. Have you not? Oh. No, I've been to the States as a, as a kid. And then my dad took us to California on this <clears throat> weird like uh, trip that didn't really work. And it was just a bit eggy with my stepmom. But yeah, I've never been to New York, which is the obvious one. It's, uh, I, I went once and it's, it's all right. It's like, it's London bigger. Yeah. It is amazing, though. It's not a holiday, though. Hang on. So New York, New York's amazing. But are we talking about comedy clubs in New York? or? or oh, no, just New York in general was just a bit like... Like, honestly, I'd go as far as to say it as it's like Newcastle, <laughs> like Northumberland <laughs> Street. Bigger. It's just, not. Right. It, it, it is. <laughs> it is. Northumberland Street, but massive. How big's the Primark? Look. <laughs> How, New York Primark must be big. What you going big. for? What, what did you go for? Did you go to like? I, sites well, I went because I was going That's around looking at where. All, You're welcome. Go on, sir. I was looking at where all my favorite horror films were made. Right. So I like dotted around America. So I went to like Washington to see where they made The Exorcist, then Pittsburgh for Dawn of the Dead, and New York for fucking everything because everything's made there. But isn't that amazing for you? The other ones were, but I got to New York. Like I got, I got fleeced within thirty seconds of being in New York. Somebody <laughs> had my eyeballs out, proper shafted. <laughs> Go on. Well, I was staying in the hotel. I'd love to see you with some New York grifter. Oh, where are you from? I'm from fucking Jarrah. <laughs> that happened with Billy Crystal. What? I'll tell you that in a sec. So <laughs> it did, honest. Did Billy Crystal steal money off you? No, Billy Crystal. Um, I asked if my accent was real. <laughs> he thought I was putting it on. Have and you I, met and Billy I went, Crystal? Sorry? Have you met Billy Crystal? Just in New York. <laughs> I didn't expect to do this, Barry. Go on. Shall what get, are you on about? Do you want to see the photograph of me and Billy you Crystal? You just bumped into Billy Crystal? Yeah. On my way to a comedy club. Right. <laughs> Honestly. I'll show you, I'll, well, I'll, he lives I'll, in New York. And you think New York's shit? That bit was all right, but <laughs> it was just like Northumberland Street in Newcastle. <laughs> uh, ca you can't even get down to the fucking five guys without, oh, Christ, is that fucking Billy Crystal again? <laughs> How? When Harry fucked off, it'd be better. <laughs> so, because I did, I did put up the picture. I, I, I tweeted the picture of me and Billy Crystal, and it was Andre Vincent it slammed me beautifully. He just put on. Brilliant comedian he from put the UK on, circuit. Um, he said, it's Mr. Saturday Night Meets Available this Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> which was a good slam. <laughs> so, hang on. Before you get the eyeballs out, which is a lovely turn of phrase, he had me fucking oh, eyeballs he, out. Honestly. And I only got fucking $25 for them. It was pro level. But uh, where, where did you see Billy Crystal? Just saw him on the street. He went, on the street. He was coming. Oh, Billy! <laughs> he was walking to this comedy club. Right. And I saw a big group of people. And whenever that happens, you're like, well, I need to see what's happening. You fucking lemming. I love it. Oh, no, I do, honestly. Oh, it's a cue. Someone's been stabbed. <laughs> Get the camera. <laughs> so I went over and I said, what's going on here? And they said, <laughs> um, Billy Crystal's about to come out. And I thought, oh, I've got five minutes. So I'll just hang on. And Billy Crystal came out. 
And I just went, Billy, can I have a photo? And he went, yeah. And I went, all right, hang on two seconds. We'll just put it on selfie. And he just went, is that a real accent? I went, oh, yeah, I'm from, do you know Gateshead? And he, like, just looked, and I just quickly got the photograph <laughs> then. This bloke just, like, swooped him away from us. And I'll, I'll put it in the episode. Send me it later, and I'll put I'll it, send, I'll, put I'll, it I'll, I'll send you the picture. It's here now. Um, yeah, and then his security swept him away. What was he coming out of? I don't know, some theatre. Right. What's going on here? <laughs> <laughs> Barry, someone's been run over. Ah, fucking mental. Let me just put it on selfie mode. <laughs> fucking another sight of a horror. <laughs> Add it to the list. But yeah, um, it was. It was um, yeah, it was. It, yeah, I was just not a fan of the place. But when what, I, so what happened with the fleecing? So I, I got into the hotel. The hotel was on Times Square, and came just put on my. Was it rough? In. It, it, it not as amazing as you'd think. Times Square is a little rough. Yeah. yeah. I've heard it's a little bit fucking salty. Because that's where all the money, it's where everyone with the money is. So there's a lot of homeless, there's a lot of theft, and uh, yeah. what you'd expect. In yeah. A up it's a tourist trap, yeah. basically. I ended up pissed walking through um, Times Square and it was empty. It was really weird. It was like four in the morning and I was hammered because I managed to get taught to some bloke in an Irish bar. And then, like, walked across town. Oh, it was so surreal just seeing it empty because you've seen it on the films all busy. But, yeah, it was just empty apart from one bloke just making hot dogs. Really weird. But when I got into the hotel... 4 a.m. hot dog. Oh, it was really weird. Um, but the hotel, I came out within... So got the taxi from the airport into the hotel, bags in, right, let's go and see New York, right, see what's going on. I got out and this... This guy came up to me. Now, I'm, I'll not do the accent, right? Please do, though. No. This is the place to do the accent. This is a safe place, Barry. <laughs> Barry. Also, Barry's not good at accents, so this is so exciting. <laughs> he was... Of? Uh, origin? American. Am what kind of American? He was an American. Now. Now. Come on. Now. I think we all know what you want. You don't have to say it. <laughs> Listen. He was Come on. He had. He was selling CDs. Selling <laughs> CDs, <laughs> right? He was selling American <laughs> selling CDs. Any other distinguishing factors there, Barry? Was he Billy Crystal or he was? He was a rapper. He was a rapper, <laughs> right? Well. And and we he, stopped being subtle with that one, didn't we? <laughs> he was a rapper. He's and, a black lad. Go on, see and, and he had. And he had. Do you know Gateshead? <laughs> <laughs> it was he had all his CDs and he he saw me he's a and he came, was he literally a rapper? He was literally a rapper. He was selling the CDs because I could see it was him on the cover <laughs> of the CDs that he was 4 selling. AM. No, no, this wasn't four a.m. This was right, in the afternoon. This was in right. the afternoon. Hot that, dog in my first album. <laughs> no, he was just there and, he, and he just looked at me and he just went. He went. You look like a man who knows your hip hop. Right. Well, he's fucking got you down to a T there. And I was apart from you've seen Erasure every year for the last <laughs> seventeen. Apart from that, he's banging into his hip hop club. And I was so flattered. I said yes. <laughs> it was like the... he's had your eyeballs out there, mate. He's paid you a very loose compliment. <laughs> oh, jeez, I didn't mean to suck him off, but honestly. It's just they've got it such a way with words. He just said, you look like a man who knows your hip-hop. And I said, yes. And he went, <laughs> he went, I'm dropping my new album. And I went, oh, brilliant. And he went, what's your name? And I went, Barry. And he instantly got a Sharpie out of his pocket and one of the CDs and wrote to Barry and signed it. And he went, it's only $20. And I was like, oh. Because he'd written on it by then. And it was like the social pressure. And I was like, oh, yeah. The I, social pressure of a fucking rapper you've never met. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want my name, my good name, being tarnished in the New York borderline homeless hip-hop community. <laughs> 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 I won't have it. But, yeah. How many barriers do you meet? Do you think you'll be able to resell? No. Okay, there's your $20. That was the thing. I was like, oh, the lad's ruined a CD now unless I buy this. <laughs> so I got done for $20 before I'd even... I don't... I hadn't even got onto Times Square. I was outside the hotel. It's not the grifter of the century, is it? Like, it's not the hustle. Well, it worked. Yeah, I know. 
that I thought you were, I was like waiting for some sort of like trickery. <laughs> He's just gone, I've signed that now. <laughs> Buy it. Oh, fucking social pressure. <laughs> Here, I just, here's 20. I didn't want to say no. Here's, here's another five for ink. And he had, <laughs> he had a load of mates as well. And I was like, oh, oh now. <laughs> now it sounds different. There's loads of them. All signing shit. <laughs> here's my bus ticket, motherfucker. What's your name? Barry. That's a receipt from Walmart. I'm going to need that. Expense that, motherfucker. You don't oh. want me slagging you off. Not in our community. <laughs> so that was about three steps from the hotel. Have you, have you ever listened to it? No. Have, have you still got it? I can't remember. It turned out to be Dr. Dre. <laughs> All those years <laughs> later. <laughs> I've either still got it or I threw it in the bin. I can't remember. Come on, man. You've got a lot of stuff. I'm surprised you don't know where that is. Just bring that a bit. bit oh, sorry. Close. Um, I'm surprised you don't know where that is. I was, oh, it's a shame. Well, could, and, and then I'd I, love to play this episode out with a bit of... <laughs> a bit of what is... What was his name? Oh, I can't remember. I, Jay-Z! I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, then I, and then I got shafted in an all-you-can-eat buffet <laughs> because I thought they were joking. I thought they were, like, taking the, the piss like the British do because I went in and it was, like, you look like your bog-standard buffet. And I said, how much is it? And they went, you pay by the weight. And I went, all right, okay. And I went in and did what I normally do, which is just all the high value items. You know, you don't, <laughs> rice, no, noodles, no, prawn crackers, no, 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 no. High value items. And then got, and what, then like lit- all the meat, basically. <laughs> basically, yeah. Just a plate of meat. And then honestly, I got to the till and the bloke weighed it. And he went, that's $40. I was like, you have f- paid $40 for a plate of meat. So- Which is probably in New York, a full plate of meat at $40 isn't ridiculous. But you're used to the British, like, oh, you pay this set amount. Nine pounds. And then you just try and. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You ba- Every time someone goes to an all you eat buffet, you're, you're aiming to put them out of business, aren't you? Yeah. Like in your head, you're like, right. This is a challenge. I want to make this a day where you lose money, you cunts. And you potentially give yourself long-term like gastric problems mm. to prove the point of like, how dare you challenge me to get value out of a 10, 12 pound, all you can eat buffet. I even have the ice cream at them and I'm lactose intolerant. <laughs> I'm physically ill afterwards, but I know that it's a high value item. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. I just can't. I just don't want to lose. I can't eat. <laughs> That's what I, you don't want to lose. That's Adam. honestly you've replaced Adam very. Uh, <laughs> I can't eat shellfish. Just come down, <laughs> Barry. If you had crab, it's just good value. <laughs> High value. Like a massive welts and growth. Fuck him. I got fucked Absolutely on Times Square amazing. as well. I went to TGI Fridays on Times Square after Broadway. It was late. It was like two a.m. and um. In New York, tipping's mad, isn't it? Like you've got a tip. I didn't understand it. You've got to, you've got to select how much at the, <laughs> at the bottom. What do you mean? What do you mean you don't understand it? it? Just it's insane. It's not the bill. Why am I giving you money? Well, yeah, it's you just, understand tipping. Though. I'd rather they just wrote it down because why put me in a socially awkward situation? I've already been in one of them with a rapper. <laughs> so why <laughs> can I have two coffees and no albums? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no. I've signed the mug, hun. <laughs> I probably would have bought it. So what happened? Um, so you you pick the amount of tip, but this... So I'm, I'll, I'll tip everywhere I'm going to ask, but this woman was actively... It was like she was trying not to get a tip. She was awful. The food was late. She was rude. Everything you could possibly imagine from a bad service, she Which was. is the, the opposite of what you expect in the States, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah. Um, and I don't know her situation. Maybe she had a bad day, but I was like, I'm not going to tip because she actively hasn't earned it. She's done the opposite. So... Put the money down. We stood up to leave, and she stood in front of me and counted the money. She went, you haven't tipped. I was like, I know. I just, I was, unfortunately, I didn't think you'd like you deserved it, kind of thing. And she went, well, you're not leaving unless you tip me. I was like, well, I don't have to tip you. And she went, you do. And I was like, well, I'm in Times Square at two a.m. I don't belong here. I'm just gonna tip her and leave. So I gave her the money, and she stepped aside and walked out. How much did he give her? Ten percent. Whatever, like fifteen percent, whatever it was, you had to give. Well, that is, yeah, that's one of them when you you like, I she don't just know. Call the boys or whatever, and I'm fucking dead outside because I haven't given twenty dollars. Because she was a rapper as well. 
<laughs> she was of the rapper community. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. When we were on that California trip, and I might have mentioned this way back in the day when this first came up on the podcast, um, we were in Lake Tahoe, and we went to a Denny's. And Denny's is basically like little chef in America, isn't Denny's it? Denny's in Japan. Right. Mm. They're, they're sort of like... Uh, I don't know if you've seen Theo Vaughn's special on Netflix, but he spends a good 10 minutes just slagging off Denny's and the women that work at Denny's. Um, it's it, it's everywhere. It's not particularly good at anything, but they do everything and they're always open. First time I'd seen American customer service. This guy came over who looked like he was like, over here you'd expect him to be like a university student that's like, he's just seemed smart, he seemed like casual. He was really friendly without trying too hard. So we've got Hickory's in Chester that um, I love. So if I get to call where, where we go with me and Laura, like my mate Matt's here uh, for a few days and tonight I'm dragging him, I'm dragging him to Hickory's. It's absolutely has to happen. It's unbelievable. Uh, just the best steak. Laura's fine with it, whatever. Over... Here in this Hickory's, they're very aware that it's an American smokehouse. So they train them to be very American style customer service. It can be done badly if they try too hard. Laura was like, This guy's making my skin crawl. He's like, Hi, guys. Hello, little lady to Etta. It, I, I'm not saying Etta was like, Who's this nonce? But I could tell Etta was a bit like, uh, Leave me alone. Just leave it like, and what does little miss want? I just, it, uh, just doing it. He wasn't being a creep, but it was over the top. And I, I think there's a way of doing amazing customer service where you're like, you're friendly, sound, efficient. And then just like, it's like almost like meeting someone in real life. If they're like, hello. Oh, I love Hertha Berlin. Oh, that looks really good. I love your hair. You're like, all right. He's trying to fuck me in platonic conversation. <laughs> um, in America, we were in that Denny's. We were like, oh, we've got to try Denny's. And my dad was like, well, they're, not, they're not up to much. I was like, I know, but we're in the States for like a week. Let's try a Denny's. Um, went in and he took our order and we were proper English about it. Like, my sister's a bit fussy. I'm fucking weird and fussy. So we're asking for things, but then changing. My dad's just a big fat fucker and he's ordering loads. My stepmom's, it couldn't have been four more different orders and me and my sister are being pernickety. And as... He was taking his order. He's like, okay, guys, what do you want? <laughs> we were like ordering. And he was like, okay, great, great, great. Okay, cool. And what do you want? Uh, what do you have to like? And and the fear in our table is like, he said, you could almost feel as like no one had said it because we didn't want to be rude, but you could tell all of us were looking at each other going, he's not writing it down. He's not writing <laughs> yeah, it down. Daddy's not writing it down. My sister's like looking at me going, I'm fussy. I can't eat it. this wrong. I won't be able to eat it. We weren't saying it because we were classic like Northern English people going, bloody hell, this is wrong. And then there's going to have to be a complaint and it'll be socially awkward. And then I'll buy an album. <laughs> it, it was really like, and he went away. He, he, the order must have been, 25 different things, including drinks. And he went, great, guys. It's going to be about 10, 15. Uh, your drinks will be with you. And he wandered off. And we were all like, well, well, I mean, I don't know. He can't. Like, really. <laughs> all of us, like, like Lancashire grandparents, like, it's unbelievable. You expect better. Terrible. I mean, he won't be able to remember you asking hash browns for this doing and that doing and me different. And he came back with the food. I honestly say it was about nine minutes later, carrying what looked like seven dishes where you're like, wow, that's impressive. He banged them all down and there was this quiet awe on our table as we were like, it's right. It's right. <laughs> it, it's all right. And then he came back with the rest and <laughs> the urge to go. <laughs> I nearly gave him the whole Nightingale family like giving him a standing bloody impressive kid very good you don't get it in Little Chef Walney Dale um, and then because we'd not been in the States long and I've, you know we were all excited we knew about the tipping culture and my dad was like over here it's a big thing the tipping culture just through boredom of being on holiday with your fucking younger sister your stepmom and your dad it's a bit dry um, and this was when I was like 22, 23. So my social life was fucking amazing. And all of a sudden we're in Lake Tahoe. It was a bit boring. And, um, and my sister couldn't go out anyway because of the licensing laws. We couldn't go anywhere that sold alcohol because she was underage. So we started making a sport of like how much you tip. We made it like, what do they deserve? We did a little like, how, what was the customer service like? How quick was it? How much did they deserve? 
uh, I think the whole order came to about $70, maybe even less, like $50. I was lobbying for him to get the same amount of the, like, I was like, he deserves 50. We gave him something like $40, like amazing. <laughs> like, trying to take pictures with that. I've never seen anything like it. They're like Darren fucking Brown, but in a Denny's. It was so impressive. Yeah. Just because that's what you, that's what you expect from customer service in the States. They're, they're good. They know what they're doing. Um, well, I, I used to work so unlike here, isn't it? When they're like, "What? We but, don't do that." Well, yeah, because I used to, I used to work for Burger King when I was like sixteen, and it was in the Metro Center, and the owner of Burger King was coming over. He was in the UK, and he was selecting certain Burger Kings to go and visit and see if they were up to scratch. And we were oh, he's doing a secret shopper on his own. Sort of, yeah. Right. But we knew he was coming. The owner, as in like the big... As in Mr. Like, King. As in like Mr. the big <laughs> plastic king bloke, yeah. <laughs> Mr. King. <laughs> Mr. King, yeah. He, uh, so he was over. And we got told, like, you've got to do it, like, to an American stand. Like, cause Which that, one did you work in? The one in the Metro Centre. Right. Um. Yeah. Great. Right. Red Quadrant. There, though. Red Quadrant. Red. Red Quadrant. Yeah. Okay. And Metro Centre is really hard to navigate. If you're from the North East, I know it. If you're not from the North, you can get lost in the Metro Centre. Yeah, it doesn't big, make sense. Very big, yeah. So I've, we were in there and we like, you know, they had us like doing night shifts, like cl like actually cleaning the place properly for the first time. Like not to the standard that we were doing it. They were like making us get chewing gum off the bottom of the tables, like cleaning <laughs> the chairs. They had us clean the ball pool, which was the first time that had ever been done. And that was a fucking, honestly, empty bottles of vodka in it and all sorts. <laughs> like, just fucking random. Not from adults, from like <laughs> Geordie seven-year-olds. <laughs> yeah, our mum put us in the fucking ball pool. <laughs> we <laughs> wouldn't waste it. Honestly, <laughs> it was just full of shit. Like, on, like bits of jewellery, bits of old currency. <laughs> like, <laughs> 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 the fucking Gateshead ball pool. Sovereign. Yen. <laughs> Fucking hell, there's some leer in here. <laughs> and, and the, the bottom of the ball pool, it was like walking on a carpet, like, you know, in a really shit, sticky nightclub, where it's like, where your feet stick to the... It was like that at the bottom of the ball pool from all the coke and spit and snot from all the kit. Oh, I was fucking vile. <laughs> and um, so, yeah, they had us being like Americans. They, they didn't have me do it. They made me work out back for the day because they were... Very like, clean the bin area. And literally what I was doing... <laughs> <laughs> no word of a lie. That's it was, such an insult. It was a big blue bin called Dougal. I'm not making this up. Right, and they sent me out the back because they knew that I had a scam going with the lift at the back. And they said, just take the bin up and down, right? Don't go jump in it because that was my other scam. The lift at the back, if you jumped up and down in it loads when it was moving, it would break the sensor and it would stop. And then you'd have to sit and wait for the fire brigade to come and get you out. Now, if you were having a boring <laughs> shift, you're just like, ah, oh, fuck it, I'm going to go and break the lift. So you'd go and just jump up, like, meh, 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 and then you'd just be like, it's going to be a couple of hours here. 999, nine, nine. yeah, you need to come and save Barry and Dougal again. <laughs> yeah, red quadrant. Yeah, round the back. Honestly, you yeah, the special, the special kid with the bin. <laughs> and then you just sit in the lift smoking. Like, you, you take a mate with you. Because you, you know you're going to be in a couple of hours. Did the fireman bollock? Did he have fire, did the fire no, service? No, they'd just come in and turn a key and it would like lower and you'd come out. Nine people have died again, Barry, because <laughs> you're negligent. It's <laughs> house fire in fucking Peter Lee, unattended, Barry with Dougal. The doors to the Don't lift would happened. open and be like stars in your eyes from all the smoke. <laughs> just like coming out, pushing a blue bin. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I got, I got sent out back while everybody else was giving it. Have, and, a, have a nice day. All right. Have, it's a pleasure to serve you. And all this right. Thing. Okay. But yeah, the head, the so. head of Burger King. He must be a rich man. No, he's got. He got is he what the CEO or the CEO of the UK Burger King was the full no, American? He's, no, he's the American one, top brass. Wow. He must be a, a rich dude. Mm. God, I don't like Burger King. Oh, uh, I little... like I like Chicken Royale. But the, Everything else can fuck off. Nah, the burgers are nicer. The Mackey days. Yeah, because they're flame grilled. And they're proper flame grilled. Did I flame grilled a pair of... of um, you, they made you use plastic tongs for the vegetarian stuff so that they were, you weren't cross-contaminating. 
and I flame grilled a pair of plastic tongs once just to see what would happen. Right. So fire brigade again turns out. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking plumes of black smoke. No Dougal this time, Barry. <laughs> <laughs> that was when I got moved to the to DA as it was called. Yeah. Oh my They're god. They're like, don't let it. He's only worth thirty seven mil. Thirty seven mil. That's all he's worth. What's is he, he the owner or is he the CEO? The CEO. What's he called? Thirty seven mil is a lot for a CEO, though, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, do you know? Because you know, CEOs are in, they're employed. Yeah, they can the, they get they get given the job. So he's if he's accrued that he's accrued it through bonuses. Yeah, I mean, oh yeah, I suppose if you're not the owner, that's all right, isn't it? Some of the fucking bonuses that CEOs get. You know, like, the Royal Bank of Scotland went bust and it basically had to be bailed... All banking had to be bailed out by the government. They were like, they've really... The top brass have really had to rein in the, their annual bonuses. Like, the CEO's only getting 1.5 million this year. <laughs> and that's down from seven. So, everyone's tighten the belt, guys. Let's try and get through this together. Fucking cons. And that's why I get annoyed about getting called a Tory. <laughs> <laughs> so just to close up, you do a uh, pub trim, don't you? Oh, yeah. Manscaped.com. Wow. Um, that was a journey. Uh, it was, yeah. Um, I tried it once. It went wrong. I probably need some new equipment. So Manscaped, <laughs> you can send us. How wrong did it go? I told you it went wrong. Are you post up? straight. No, I got it from Amazon. I took it out of the box. I went to the bathroom went bleh, and took it all off. Your oh, pubes, yeah, yeah, your pubes, yeah, yeah. And then I got back and shook the box from Amazon, and the god fell out. I was like, "Oh, you yeah, because you got some on. cheap shit from Amazon." <laughs> yeah, yeah, I didn't Try know you put the god on. I still have a penis, balls, and some pubes. Um, yeah, well, that's enough of thinking about your. So I've, I've just left it now. I've your mons pubis. Laura uh, wants the full wax thing. Huh? Have we talked about it on pod? The yeah. the full. Uh, What's it called? Laser hair oh, removal. Well, I've got for Seneca for Christmas. Right, okay. Just, it was a moment there where I thought I'd encroached it's she on... Said wax? <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's lasers? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, really? Okay. It well, does the same thing, doesn't it? It's a it, perma wax with yeah. lasers. It's six sessions. I got her six sessions and she'd be like a dolphin forever. Right. Well, <laughs> so it's, it's a gift for me as well. well. I'm telling you right now. <laughs> Fucking blow off. I'm telling you right now. <laughs> it's going to blow all then at the end. <laughs> I don't want to speak unkindly of my beautiful wife but it's going to take more than six sessions to... <laughs> no yeah no it doesn't. why are you speaking with authority about my wife's pubic region <laughs> because it's heavy man is she's dark she's dark isn't she oh it's is honestly... she dark she is dark maybe yeah. she'll if she like... trims a pube she loses two pounds on the scales like it's <laughs> it's it's decent like you know when pubes fall there's a real <laughs> <laughs> dunk. And she some, take, with a, some with a brush. Oh, when she takes <laughs> when she takes the meat out of the biff. <laughs> really? So she wants because Serica, I've mentioned it. She was like, oh, "I'd like that." Oh, yeah, Serica can't wait, right? Because it just means they have got less to do when they get because girls have to shave. Like I, yeah, and I I want her to. My favorite story from the one of my favorite stories from the podcast ever was Shital Sheeps getting his chest waxed in Cardiff. My mate Bondi's dental student mate. And he had a fucking really thick chest hair that he was embarrassed about. And he went to get it waxed and he walked into the Chinese waxing place. And the woman, the professional waxing woman, as as he took his top off, she went, oh my <laughs> God. And he was like, she, she, she went at it for ages, started from the bottom, got halfway up and went, you're going to have to come back tomorrow. <laughs> I'll lock you in. I can't finish it. I honestly think there's a chance when Laura goes, if she goes to a Chinese... <laughs> they don't shave it, you know. I know, but if she goes to a Chinese-owned no, laser hair remover, I think there's a chance they're like, oh, my God. Tell it's Scouse. Tell it to the one by ours. It's Scouse. Skin Survivor, let's call it. Skin Survivor. Survivor. Are you going to be there while when they she... do it? I what? will not be there, no. What? Are you, what, are you there for... Because like, you're there for the birth, you've got to be there for the... <laughs> Deep fuzzing. <laughs> no, just it's literally just like you put goggles on and they just lazy. <laughs> and you don't feel it. It's it's painless. It just kills. The have follicles. you ever seen a Have you ever seen a gardener oh. with a strimmer? Goggles on. <laughs> <laughs> Is that petrol? <laughs> but you've got to you've got to go there hairless. You can't. They don't shave you. You go there hairless. You shave. And then oh, like, oh, okay. And then they kill oh, the follicles okay. over. Uh, I've, I've got pain. that anyway because I've got very little. 
body hair as it is anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I don't like. I don't you're, think you yeah, need your body, body hair <laughs> situation is both old and young at the same time. It's really odd. You're like I've seen your legs. That you have they they have a sort of youthful shine to them, but also sort of like a post chemotherapy <laughs> look. You know. <laughs> Fucking hell, Dan. A youthful shine. That's too far. We found your leg. Don't ever say I've got cancer legs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we'll keep you updated on the meat of the bit. I was just thinking the smell from that that must be imagine that every day which like if you work in that job just you like, mean this you mean smell the burning pubes right good no, I wondered I what think, I think I it's not like then. a flamethrower the smell of that women oh, oh right oh no Jesus <laughs> Christ no, it's I mean, literally Painless, or it's just fishing in all into your skin. So it's just them. All oh, right. It, it must be so like the no LED, and it, or anything. No, no burn. It just kills the follicles in the skin. All oh, right. So there's for no a Patreon special. Will you? <laughs> will I? <laughs> will you give up a part of your butt? Like I've got a dead pig tattooed on my bottom. You have. Can I have a look at it? No, we I've got. We, uh, you can, but we got it out on the last episode. I don't. I need to stop getting my ass out on public episodes. <laughs> Sign up to Patreon and you can get unlimited. I'll get one arse cheek lasered then. One arse Have you got a hairy arse cheek? No, no. Paul. I'd get my arse crack L- laser hair removal. That's like, I hate that hair. Do it then. Um, uh, I'm not sure they do that as a package though. Yeah. Your arse hair? What do you mean? On the cheeks or on your in In the, nipsy? In the, in the what? You, you know. You in your what? Nipsy. <laughs> in your nipsy. <laughs> you know what I mean? I do. But I don't know that I've ever heard it called you fucking nipsy. <laughs> you mean the crack? No, the it, oh the gooch. No, no, the the little the bumhole. Yeah, yeah. Right inside, just in the area. I don't have a hairy internal sphincter. <laughs> no, the outside bit. The, Is that your nipsy? The fucking balloon knot. Yeah, the balloon knot. <laughs> you know what I mean? What's a nipsy? Is it just your nipsy because it just nips it off, doesn't it? Just. <laughs> Just, uh, oh, just nip that off. <laughs> uh, that's a cigar cutter. Yeah, 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 exactly. That yeah. so much sense. Is that something that you've come up with? Oh, no, is that your family just, thing? Just always called it. Come on, Barry, clean your nipsy. <laughs> it's got work to do. Nipsy hustle. <laughs> Eating all them tongs. Um, <laughs> what a first 47 minutes of bullshit. We will see you shortly for some correspondence. All right, Lids, we need to tell you about our sponsor, NordVPN. But if I'm being completely honest and sounding like a granddad, I don't know loads about VPNs. I do, though. VPNs are an absolute belter. And the fact you watch as much porn as you do and have never used one of these is absolutely fucking mind-blowing. It is essentially premium cyber security. It hides everything you're doing. And with one click of a mouse, you can decide you're in any country in the world. So, you know, like Netflix is in America is a lot bigger than in the UK. Right. You can go, I'm in New York, lad, and it'll give you American Netflix. If you want to watch a Premier League game at 3 o'clock in the afternoon that isn't available in the UK, you can go, do you know what? I'm in Saudi Arabia, lad, and I'm watching a bit of fucking Liverpool against Tottenham Hotspur. Sp- 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 can I be in Burundi on a Monday? You can be in Burundi on a Monday. Can I be in Dubai on a Friday? <laughs> you have Dubai on a Friday. Oh, you can my be- God. There's 59 different countries on uh, NordVPN. I think for me, because I've, I've used this company for a couple of years, so it's a big benefit that they're now sponsoring us and I can sell them. They're the best VPN company in the world. The cybersecurity is next level. And we've now got a promo code that gets you 73% off up to that. And a bonus gift if you sign up using our code. <laughs> That's a lot. Go to nordvpn.com slash have a word and use the custom code have a word. And on top of that, 30 day money back guarantee. So if you get it and you think it's shite, they'll give you your dough back risk free. Absolute belter, and an honour to have them on board as a sponsor, Megan. I um, had a, a kebab late last night. Um, picked a young Matthew from the train station up later than I'm used to, and just fucked up my dinner and just ate at about eleven o'clock at night and put a lot of chili sauce on that kebab. And I have had naughty bottom since. Mm. Oh. I don't know how anyone... You eat at, like, mental times. <laughs> I do. Like, 
Yeah. I get hungry about 11 at night. Yeah, same. Do you eat breakfast? No. No, same. Right. I start eating like mid, like three o'clock and then I eat through the night. Oh, really? You see, a meal for me is the end of the day. As soon as I like have, have me, my yeah. big meal, it's like sleep. That's why maybe nipping for that, <laughs> for that little lunch that we just had. It was fairly light though. Right. Sandwich and some chips. That'd be all right. But if I have my main meal of the day, then it's, it's better. <laughs> That's a baby. Right. You eat, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you eat one meal a day. Yeah. Well, that's why I was always like, up like cooking. Like a fucking bear in the... Like, <laughs> I just eat like a snake once every six months. But it's massive. Just a goat. <laughs> <laughs> Barry dislocating his jaw. <laughs> oh, God. You'll have to leave him till June. He's eaten. <laughs> but no, it would, like I would be like... That house we lived in, I'd do like... Think nothing of baking a casserole at 4 a.m. <laughs> Honestly, you've turned out to be a really nice person, you know. Oh, here but we if, go. Here we go. <laughs> but if you'd have ended up killing people, I wouldn't have been blown away. <laughs> I can't, like, I'd have been like, oh, okay, yeah, some things, some things marry up, you know. <laughs> no, was like the obsession with death and the eating habits aren't enough <laughs> alone. But it was one of those ones where if you'd have killed, like, a sex worker, if, I'm saying if, right, then we'd have backtracked and gone, oh, hang on. He's a gamer some... as well. Big gamer, aren't you? All right, a gamer's A murderous. gamer. I thought you yeah. said something else. A gamer. <laughs> a gamer. <laughs> right, I am. Uh, that, that essentially was why I was up so late was the gaming, because I'd get in from a gig and then it's like, well, I've clearly got to play three hours of Gears of War. Yeah. Just to get all that stress out my system. Yeah, I have to murder people to get that stress out of your system. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just get it. And shout at foreign children. Now, we definitely did do that on the last podcast. <laughs> I still do that now. <laughs> it's the best release. Sit yeah, I, 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 play, I play Forza now. and get that's. Oh, you driving game now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so you yeah. play like Among Us. Um, play like Call of Duty, a bit of FIFA. A what? Among Us, it's called. It's nice, a, cool. It's a good game. Just needed a VAR on what you just said. <laughs> <laughs> it was either a mongoose or something cancelable. <laughs> I play a mong with us, you know. But I drive like a bastard as well on the game. I'm oh, like, yeah, that's how you have fun. You don't yeah. have fun. <laughs> that's good. interesting just because so. in real life, you drive like a fucking, <laughs> <laughs> like a pensioner. <laughs> <laughs> you drive like 75-year-old Barry, like, don't rush me. I rarely go above 60 in the car. <laughs> oh, God. What about in Forza? Twatting it about. Oh, Forza. Oh, the, the corners of what I use for the brake or other cars. Right. Hit the handbrake, <laughs> slam into someone else, knock them off the checkpoint. That's the point of it, yeah? Yeah. And, and, then, uh, and then, then you can hear me, yeah, going, there was one blow the other night. Just get that close. There's one blow the other night. I did it really aggressively. I proper, like, handbraked and slid. It was on a dirt track and it just went bang and just knocked him clean. And just for a second, I heard him, he just went with real aggression. He just went, you fucking twat. <laughs> <laughs> it was so aggressive. And that's what gets you ready for bed. <laughs> I was that. And I a was That and a full, like, <laughs> fucking Sunday dinner at 3.30 a.m. There's nothing relaxes me more than a leg of lamb at nearly 4 a.m. <laughs> And just upsetting a stranger via the internet. <laughs> you fucking ch twat. I hope you choke. He was furious. <laughs> it just. Um, How are you linked up on Forza? How is that even? Party. So you, you, you have a headset and your friends are in parties and you chat to them. And you drive around. Or, or, you, if, you're or, online, or you if people aren't in party chat, you can just hear the, the general lobby chats. So there'll be 12 of you in a race. Um, uh, in a race, yeah. yeah, there is race. It's not just like a free driving game, no, game no. where you're like, "Oh, yeah, there you are. See you later." No, well, it's, it, a it's a race. It's a race, but you can just drive around as well. Because okay, so I think I've talked to you about this game, and you've told me that you, there's a mode where you just drive around. Yeah, and I thought that was a whole game, but there is a race. There is a race. Well, the one where you just drive around because in Forza Four you could drive around Edinburgh. Yeah, it's and it's a, they've they've recreated Edinburgh beautifully. It's amazing. There's and flyers. It, there's and reviewers. The first thing I did was drive up to the Pleasance. I was like, I'm going to fucking take out an improv group crossing the road. <laughs> but there's no pedestrians in it. <laughs> 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 Trying to do Macbeth while flying. <laughs> when shall we three meet again? <laughs> Fuck off! 
Imagine, I'm here comes Barry <laughs> and a Toyota Corolla. <laughs> oh, I drove down the caves. Good to see Daryl. <laughs> Amazing. Are you going to start becoming a gamer, Dan? Because you've got a console now, haven't you? Yeah, I'm definitely going to become a good... Because I'm, I'm just sitting around going, what am I doing with this free time? <laughs> um, <laughs> so Finn, very kindly, has given me a PS4, which is re- really kind of you. But then, uh, you know... Well done, Finn. Everyone's like, well, you've been really mean to him. But I am, um, you know, incredibly nice to Finn. Once these microphones are off, but there's something, <laughs> like a deep... Once the mics are up, I'm like, fuck you, Finn. You um, see, when, when... I even get African women to do voiceovers for the audio intro. Is she still around? Is she still around? Because I'm six months behind. Well, she's just had an upgrade, which we paid her handsomely for. We've just bought her a second home in Zimbabwe. Right. And um, She knows her worth very well. We Does paid she? her yeah. We paid her 20 quid for the initial... <laughs> this is have a word. If you just watch the YouTube, you have no idea what we're talking about. If you are one of our audio army, um, this is a massive part of it. But the YouTube show has never had the African lady doing the intro. The first time we found her on Fiverr, I was like, this is what I want. Adam was like, that's great. And it was like, the funniest podcast in the game, this is have our word. 20 quid that cost. She did uh, three reads. It was brilliant. Classic Fiverr.com. It's useful. Next time, she was like, oh, for broadcast rights, it's 40 quid. It's like in dollars, but it was like basically 40 quid. I was like, yeah, it seems fair. And then six months later, she's obviously checked who we are. And she was like, I need $300. And I basically went, fuck off. But you can't then find another African lady. <laughs> she's, We need her. So this time, I was like, yeah, we do actually need. So we paid her $300 to do a new intro. <laughs> In the middle of it, she's like, shut up, Finn, you big, f- you, <laughs> you you big, big fingered fin- weirdo. <laughs> It's so good. <laughs> it's really good. Um, where, where but, I, I, but I appreciate that PS4 thing. That's very kind of you. You're being mean to him where I'm at six months ago. I'm still mean to him. It's oh, it does, funny. You scream at him to build something in another room. In, in real life, I'm his rock. Um, oh. What's a PS4 worth? It? Can Finn have the mic? This is how. Basically, what happened is I tried to trade it in. They rejected it, so I offered it to you. <laughs> That's absolutely solid. Yeah. Why, why, why did they reject it? The Ethernet port was slightly damaged. I know, I know. It's Wi-Fi. I, I said that. I said the, the Ethernet works as well. It's annoying, but they just reject Is it. Is the Ethernet thing that's going to hook it up to the... I, I've bought 2K15 or whatever. 2K21. I bought the golf game. Oh, right, yeah. Is it PGA? I went to... Oh, my God, I'm so out of the game. What's it? Pit... What's the shop called with all the smelly goths? CEX. CEX. Oh, CEX. Yeah. Just everyone looks like a fucking minging Billie Eilish. <laughs> like even the men look like just fat, spotty Billie Eilish fans. Like, it's got a smell, she's CEX. The, she's yeah. the like only no human in history that has pulled off green dyed hair. Shout out Billie Eilish. I'm not even sure about her music, but generally, every time she comes up on Instagram Reels, I'm like, she looks fucking great. She seems sound. I like her. She pulls it. She's got massive tats. I really like the green hair. Everyone else that's ever dyed their hair green needs to grow the fuck up and not work at CEX. (laughs) And I went in and got a 15 quid golf game, and that's going to be my go-to. I will never be linking that up to the internet because the last thing I need is to play golf with some aggressive hormonal I don't think that's gonna happen on Portuguese <laughs> child. <laughs> that's not gonna happen on No, no fuck you. I listen to Rava Wad, you're a nonce, damn. <laughs> you are what we call in Lisbon a Torai. <laughs> fuck off, Tiger. Pow. Did, did I tell you the story about... Because um, just, when, just when you said that, so, that someone rejected it for sale, it made me think of somebody else who bought something second-hand that would have been rejected. Have I told you the story about the comedian buying the second-hand iPhone? Go on. So it's a comedian who I won't name, uh, and I'm in a WhatsApp group with him, and one day, just out in the blue, he'd been very silent in the WhatsApp group for about Northern. two weeks. Northern, yes. Yeah. And Barry's are only in WhatsApp groups with Northern Comics. <laughs> <laughs> if you're from south of Derby, Barry's not interested. <laughs> he sent me. He just put he put something in group chat and he just said, "Right, l- right, listen, lads. 
uh, d- don't don't be sending anything dodgy to this group for, for just you know just don't don't put anything in it for a while. Now this is a group where the dodgiest <laughs> fucking memes and viral videos would get sent to. I was like, what's going on? Now the comic Mike, we'll call him, had. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I felt that coming up from me, Wellis. <laughs> is it him? Yeah, of course it is. <laughs> Why don't we just say who it is? Everyone fucking knows. It's all right. It's, he doesn't give a shit. No, he doesn't. He's... Every time, I, literally, the only contact I ever have with him is one in every four messages. He's like, How's the family? Is everyone all right? The rest of the time, he's like, Look at the tits on this bit of fucking. <laughs> he's, she's from fucking Czech Republic. Look at them <laughs> bastards. Like he knows he's he's an animal. All right, so it's it's Mike Will. The group is it's not the most forward thinking liberal of groups because it's me, Mike Wilkinson, Dave Twentyman, and Sam Harland. Right? <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I, I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm I'm the latest addition to it. That's they, a yeah, I mean, time. if you lot were mates two generations ago, <laughs> there's a lot of bruised women in that fucking group. <laughs> not for a bit of doubt. No. Hey, she got fucking uppity. <laughs> <laughs> Um, <laughs> I've been giving Barry some shit. Um, I, I was can late. I, can I apologise about cancer legs? That was well. <laughs> I, I, I actually thought about that at dinner. Like, oh, that was a bit mean. So he Barry's just, actually got cancer of the legs, and it's not funny. He just said, "Don't put anything weird in the in in the group for a while." Now, what had happened was Mike had dropped his phone and cracked the screen, and the screen wasn't working anymore. So he was like, "Oh, I, I can't send pictures properly and all that." And in the end, he was in a pub and someone just went, oh, he was struggling with the phone. Someone went, oh, I've got an iPhone at home that I'm selling, if you want it. And he went, was it? And he went, oh, you know, it's the, you know, the latest one. It's the iPhone 7, right? And Mike's like, oh, yeah, that's, that sounds like a good one, the number 7, right? And he was like, <laughs> it's 50 quid. And he was like, oh, a, a bargain. I'll, I'll, I'll be around tomorrow then. So the next day, Mike... You're making him sound like the guy from... Well, open all hours. Oh, uh, Granville. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Granville. I'll, Is there an iPhone 4 7? I'll, I'll bring Ralph round. <laughs> so he went round, bought, bought the phone. So went to the guy's door, knocked, bought the phone. Bought the guy. So he's walking back through the place where he lives, a very small community. And he's like, he's pleased as fuck with his phone, like making sure everybody can see, like, like oh, Mike's got a new iPhone. <laughs> so. Someone just went. Someone went. Hey, oh, Mike, where, where have you got that from? And he went. Oh, I've just, I've just bought it off Mick. And they went, Mick. They went, yeah. And they went, not. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Mick Smith. They went, not Mick Smith. And he went, yeah, I bought it off him. Went fifty pound. He went, you do, you do know he's just been done for child sex offences. What? And Mike's there holding his phone, right? <laughs> and he's like. <laughs> like, what's this phone being used for? And Mike's a teacher. Oh, God, yeah, he works part-time as a teacher, doesn't he? So he's been knocking on a paedophile's door. Right, and buying electronics. And bought the most tracked phone in the fucking Lake District. Oh, my God. And he's now walking home, logging into WhatsApp. Right. All right, Sam, all right, Baz, all right, Dave. Don't oh, worry, oh. there's been a backup. <laughs> And it's put it all in your gallery. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, he was like... D- what did he do? Just, like, bin it? Oh, yeah, just take the SIM card out and bin it, yeah. Because, obviously, that phone will have... Yeah, all kinds every of... Every tracker going on it. Yeah. And that- and if he gets done in Operation U-Tree, he can't be like, I bought it from down the road. It's an iPhone 7. Yeah. You know, from Mick Smith. <laughs> <laughs> I, listen, I know there's kiddie pics on it, but we have 50 quid. <laughs> Like, paedophilia is awful, but I love a bargain. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah, I, that's not good, is it? Oh, my God. So that's Shout that's, that's Mike Wilkinson. When... That uh, coming up from my wellies, he told me that he <laughs> was banging a posh bird. He, was, he loves it. Since his divorce, listening to his stories, it's basically, he's like a 50-year-old fucking teenager. Like, oh, yeah, I met her. Cracking baps. And it's just, he doesn't doesn't give a shit. He's got his house, he's got his dog, and he's got his divorce, and he seems dead happy with it. Um, But he was like, yeah, I was, was, uh, you know, sleep, he never says sleeping with, he's like banging this, I don't know what what terminology, porking. 
I, I, anyway, I was having a roll in there with this posh lass, and uh, cracking tit. And uh, I was like, oh, I was like, I hadn't seen her for a, for a week or so. We, we, you know, I was getting into vinegar strokes. And just as I finished, I went, oh, God, I can feel that coming up from me wellies. <laughs> <laughs> and, and apparently her face was like, because she was quite middle class, because the Lake District is full of northern yokels and also people who've retired from, like, London at 45 because their startup has been sold. And she, apparently she went, I beg your pardon. <laughs> <laughs> so every like now, me and Laura, when we have sex, like a, a lot of our relationship is built on the fact that Laura's got a great sense of humor and she thinks I'm funny. And that it, when when that changes, we're probably not going to be a couple anymore. But for now, it's still good. And I love like taking the piss. But no one is making doing shtick during sex. I don't care how funny you are. Once you're in there. You're having fun and you're doing the job, aren't you? But afterwards, it takes such a lot of strength <laughs> to not do a call back to like, oh, dear. Well, coming up from me, well, is. <laughs> <laughs> and we, like, I, my big fear is that I'm going to get so scoused by this podcast that I'm going to be like, just after I've come go, oh, what? Oh, <laughs> oh, I'd love you to do that. <laughs> just, oh. The thing is, what? is that... Mike and Dave, it's like the comedians work in the circuit, but they 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 are very sort of they they they're not they're not woke, they're not they're not up to speed. They're northern the working class lads that are very very funny and work in an industry where we have ties to a very woke London circuit and Edinburgh Festival circuit. It's the arts, isn't it? And that's absolutely right. Like, our alternative circuit was born as a reaction to a very racist, homophobic mainstream circuit. And that's great. And now the mainstream really is that alternative circuit. That's now what you'd call mainstream comedy. But we've retained the rules of the adapted alternative scene from the 80s, which is no racism, no sexism, you know, like just modern liberal left-wing politics within comedy and then you get these guys who are good guys they're absolutely good guys but they have not one foot in the old working class mentality but a couple of tours just uh, over the line and it's fucking funny this it's, is it's funny 20 men did um a gig in leeds that's quite woke and well not woke but it's it's one of the trendier nicer gigs the hi-fi night and i think w woke, no, it, not woke, woke is a word that he's now used to like as a stick against young people who just are basically politically correct. And let's be honest, they're right. Like, but it, it's the it's the sort of it's the it's the weird sort of reaction to anything anyone being called out for being uh, like alt right or like is then to sort of counteract with like, well, you're just woke. Like, they, I don't know. I think that's a very social media type term, isn't it? Really, the hi-fi is just. It's a load of like students, graduates, and nice people in Leeds. Yeah, it's nice. Like, it's nice people. Yeah, it's exactly the gig I want to do in Leeds compared to every other gig. Yeah. That's the one, isn't it? Yeah. Well, Dave Twentyman, <laughs> maybe not the ideal compare, because somebody told me on a message that one of his opening gambits at the club. I don't know if you're going to have to cut this out. No, we're not. It I'm telling you right now, it's not coming out. He was like, all right, well, well, welcome to Wi-Fi. <laughs> and there was a big group of women. And he went, all right, girls, which one of you's biggest slag? <laughs> <laughs> like, fucking welcome to 2021. <laughs> I, 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 say, I, say, I say, which one's <laughs> biggest slag? Day oh, 20. my God. Mm. I still think it's one of the more entertaining things on our circuit watching someone who just cannot get, like, talking about iPhones. There are comedians that are just too set in their ways, and I'm not even talking about old guys, because there's some very moderate, progressive older comics. You mentioned Andre Vincent before. That guy was basically an act at the very, very start of the 80s when the comedy store was being put together. Mm. He was one of the first circuit comedians in the UK. We're talking, like... One of the forefathers of the circuit that we're now involved in. And now there are guys, and I'm not talking about Dave and Mike, I'm talking about there's a bunch of guys who it's um it's literally like walking with dinosaurs. You're like, where mm. are you? Like, have you just rejected what's going on? I'm not even talking about the the the, the more recent stuff, like 
since like Black Lives Matter, the progression with sort of trans rights and just even how we're talking about those issues and being more open and gender pronouns and everything. There are some guys who are just like, it's not their age. It's just sort of like, I think where they're from and they've done too many years of gigging how they've always been gigging. They were like, no, I'm sorry. I can't do the iPhone update on this one. I'm just <laughs> going to keep saying what I've said since 2007. Mm. And uh, it, it's glaring at some gigs where you're like, Makes no. you flinch, doesn't well, that, it? Yeah, sometimes. The, 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 any comic who thinks it's all right in 2022 to do a bit of comparing and go, tell you what, love, cracking set of tits. I know exactly what you're it's thinking not, about it as well. That's, come on, man. It was never really all right. No. But you have to be fucking toned deaf to be like, well, what you know, it's a compliment. <laughs> they are cracking tits. <laughs> and I don't even care if the woman with cracking tits is like, thank you, I have got cracking tits. It's not about that. There's more going on. <laughs> fucking idiot. Um, so... Uh, talking about uh, Northern Legends, we've got Jamie Hutchinson coming in next week and we're recording... Fuck me, Jamie Hutchinson has become instant pod royalty. Yeah. From his episode in November and the clip about Dr. Catford that was our first... See, month. I haven't heard this yet. Oh, and Christ, I Barry. Because you... people keep on talking about Dr. Catford. He just came in. Like Jamie Hutchinson was a guy that me and Adam mentioned as a possible guest sort of six months ago and... Like, Adams does a brilliant job of booking the guests, and it's a balancing act of, like, who's going to help us raise our profile, like guys like Jimmy Carr, and who's going to be great on the pod? And Jamie was a name that got mentioned, and then, you know, there's only one guest a week, and it's easy for that to just not happen. And he went on Rob Thomas's podcast. So if you've... if I don't know if we've given another the uh, another one pod men, a mention, but... Not yeah, no, but we should. Rob, Rob Thomas and Simon Wozniak, who are both, like former guests of ours, and they're our mates, are doing uh, a pod called Another One. And it's the Another One pod. Go and check it out. They've had Paul Smith on. They've had Rob Mulholland on. And they've had Jamie Hutchinson on a couple of times. They're our mates. They've copied our format. And uh, in terms of counterfeit, I think it's all right. What yeah, do you reckon? It passes. Yeah. And if Rob Thomas gets competitive about numbers, I will shove them up his ass. <laughs> because yeah. there's something about Rob Thomas who I really like as a friend, but fuck me, he is just such an antagonist. Yeah, yeah. It makes me want to go, Play go football fuck yourself. Every time we tweet somebody, he's like, yeah, watch your fucking back because we're coming for you. You're like, oh, all right. <laughs> um, but yeah, genuinely, go and check out another one pod. And uh, Jamie Hutchinson's been on there. And so Rob Thomas was like, lads, you've got to get him on. So he was the thing that made... Adam go, do you know what? Yeah, if Rob vouches for him, fuck me, he has been so popular. He was amazing at the live show as well, um, which people who bought the live stream will have seen. He just came on. And Alfie Brown, who is a sensational comedian and a, a very popular Have A Word guest, just didn't know what to do with him. Alfie Brown at one point went, it's sort of unbelievable that you exist. Yeah. <laughs> which sort of sums up Jamie but Hutchinson. But the thing is... People might think, oh, it's fake. That it can't be. No, the, he's, the stuff he says isn't fakeable. He's it's, one of the most marvelous fuck ups I have ever had the pleasure of knowing. Yeah, he's just great, and um, I think he's gonna become uh, a real pod, like pod legend. I think he'll find a place parts. on the internet. Definitely. Well, he's in. He's got some. He's got some things in the works because the reaction to what he's done has been so brilliant. And he's a fan of our, ours, and we're a fan of his. So he's coming in next week um, to do a lockdown lock-in. Adam is away. Or the pod royalty will join us. So I made a call to Ishan Akbar. Yeah. So we have got two genuine... Heavyweights. Oh, my. Oh, yeah. So, so to have Ishan and Jamie in here with booze, Carl and Finn are going to be in here, hopefully Steve, and we are going to get pissed. So next week's Patreon episode is me and Ishan, and then we are going to go out for a bit of tea, get Jamie from the train, come back in here, and do uh, a lockdown lock-in that's been long overdue for me. Yeah. Um, it, no, I think it was a nice enough gap, though. Yeah. I think we've left it long July. enough. We see, July, yeah. Yeah, but Adam's got a social life. You've got a social life. I don't have a... Like, yeah. the lockdown lock-ins are genuinely, like, a fucking night out for me. Yeah. And Laura's like, of course, it's work. If I go and get drunk in a pub, it's definitely not work. If I come and get drunk here, she's like, honestly, it's great. That's how you grow the Patreon. 
8,000, so proud of you. I do need to go get pissed, love. Thank you. So if you're not a patron of this podcast, uh, there are 8,000 people who think you're wrong, and I've got two people coming in the studio next week that might um, tempt you over to the dark side. Sign up at patreon.com slash have a word pod. Ishan and Jamie H. It'll be a out. Lockdown lock-in. It'll be out at 6 p.m. on the 14th of January. Oh my God. I'm sad that Adam is not here for a lot. It's going to be weird having a lockdown without him. But the way everyone's schedule was working, we needed to get it done. Otherwise, it might not have happened in January. Um, and a secondary reason you need to sign up to the Patreon is uh, the Patreon special. We're doing basically one of these a month now. And January's will be the lockdown lock in. Uh, February's going to be the ghost hunt. Two. Two. With Barry Dodds. With old Barry the Rapper fan. Yeah. Where do we um, go on, Barry? Well, because <clears throat> I genu- I know the name you of get it. get emotional. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us where we're going. I Barry's on the hunt. Barry's <laughs> on the hunt. So, 30 East Drive was a, a, good, a good starter. Yeah. It was, you know. If you are new to this podcast and you haven't signed up to the Patreon, one of our first Patreon specials that wasn't a lockdown lock-in, Barry took us to Rotherham? No. Pontifract. 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 Rotherham. To, well, it's near. It's not far. It? It's, like, it's South Yorkshire, isn't it? Yeah, same area. Um, West Yorkshire. Whatever, Yorkshire. Fucking Yorkshire. And we went to the most haunted house in the UK. S- supposedly the most haunted house in terms of activity, most violent poltergeist in Europe, things like that. Yeah. It's a house that's quite famous now it gets it's had a movie made about it it gets lost in hoover it does need a hoover and some air freshener and some new the scariest thing about it was my fucking (laughs) house dust allergy um Um, adam nearly had kittens adam uh, adam had a bad time and we got it all on film and it's available on the patreon however however that was done people want more we that should have been done in my opinion Overnight, it should have been overnight. It was in the summer too, so it was bright. It was in the summer, so it was still light at night. Right. So what's the? It still worked though, didn't it? It was a beautiful summer's evening as the sun set over the council houses of Pontefract. Adam didn't need darkness because he shat his pants and left a bit. We were. What were we meant to do in the build? We were meant to do seven minutes. No, five. Ten minutes in the. Uh, alone, it's ten, 10 minutes alone. And Adam in did. The room it upstairs. wasn't ten. It, it was. was ten. It was walking around the house and then go upstairs. It wasn't as long as ten. He managed a minute. Oh, no, he did. Oh, like he a did minute a minute 20. twelve seconds or something yeah. like that. Yeah. <laughs> and that was in the daylight. So, however, so that was a good sort of taster. So we've started basic, and I think now this time let's go right to the extreme. Is it extreme? Yeah. This is what I think. And to the point where I've got genuine concerns about whether Adam will go in or if he'll do anything in there. Because if that was his reaction in Pontefract, I don't know how he's going to deal with Chillingham Castle. In January. In January. Where it goes dark at fucking... It's dark at four four. o'clock, yeah. Is there heating in there? There, There's a log fire in one of the apartments which will light for some heat. It's very cold. Um, This is a real... It's a castle. It's hidden in the hills of North Northumberland. It's one of the places that was besieged by the Scots when William Wallace was invading it, and Chillingham was the place they were tortured. Now, the history and the ghost stories are incredible, and there's so much to see. So there's a torture chamber. There's an original dungeon with an original oubliette. I can't be asked, Barry. I might, I might be sick. There's a lake, which is... Because apparently the English, after they were finished with the bodies of the Scots, couldn't really be bothered burying them, so they were dumped in a lake that's about a mile's walk from the back of the castle. Though you can't fish in there because people keep pulling bits of shit up, so they don't allow people to fish in it. And apparently if you put your hand in at midnight, you are Ah. apparently cursed, and you can feel the hands of the dead pulling you down. So we'll be taking Adam there at midnight and asking him to put his hand in the water. Nope. I will not be doing that. There's the Uber. I will wash my dick and balls in that fucking... What? Hang on. No, it's January. No. (laughs) I just backtracked on that. I won't be cursed. I would be a eunuch. That's how that would go. Well, there's one room that um, Sir Humphrey uncovered when he was going through the place. Sorry, Sorry, who? Sir Humphrey Wakefield, the owner of the castle. (laughs) Um, 
And before everyone jumps on, yes, I know, father-in-law of Dominic Cummings. Uh, fucking Is he? The, yeah, the tweets I got. So what? That's so <laughs> odd. So, so Humphrey. So Humphrey's daughter is married to Dominic Cummings. Right. Is he, okay. is he going to be there? He's not a regular visitor. Okay, okay. okay. I can't believe that this is a Tory castle. I'm shocked. <laughs> <laughs> so Humphrey's one of those... Ma- what a surprise. So Humphrey's one of those mad old toffs who's skint, but has somehow got a castle. He was given the castle. Um, and when he was gone through it, they found a room in one of the walls, deep, deep in one of the walls, and it's just a tiny little room with one door, no daylight, and a hole in the floor that's now got a metal grate on top of it. And that's the oubliette. So, that, so you go in, it's the small dungeon at the top. You'd be put in there, and you, there's still the marks on the wall where people would scratch down Just their make days. Make sure your mic's close. Where people would scratch down their days when they were in there. And an then oubliette. An oubliette. Just a hole in the ground. It's French for forgotten. So you'd be put in. They'd leave you there for a while, forget about you, and then when they were done with you, they'd just kick your bones and what was ever left alive of you in the hole in the floor, and the next person would be put in, looking down the hole at what fate awaits them. So we'll be going in Has there. Has a human bin? Essentially, yeah. Basically, they just put you in there and let you die. Yeah, forget about you, yeah. So we'll be going in there. And that doesn't bother you. So you'll be going, well... It's what the, it's I'm what, not getting a new yet. <laughs> what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a list of challenges because there's a lot at Chillingham. There's a lot to do, a lot of different things. Like there's going to be some arguments over who has what bedroom because one of the bedrooms has a fireplace in it. That fireplace isn't actually a fireplace. It's been made to look like one. It's because that is actually a hole in the wall where a skeleton was brought out of it. And the body of a young boy. They call him the blue boy because people see blue sparks coming out the wall. No, Dan can have that one. He doesn't give a fuck. So that's one of the bedrooms. That Is there like you... a Premier Inn? Because <laughs> I'll stay there. Near the A1 somewhere, yeah. Right. And the thing is with Chillingham You is... are in the castle with Sir Humphrey, the blue boy, and the fucking... It's likely he won't be there. Cause uh, he's... Really? It's likely just going to be us. I don't know if Sir Humphrey needs to meet Adam. No. <laughs> I. Pussy. <laughs> what? <laughs> Ass pussy. <laughs> p- 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 I, say, I, say, I say pussy. Um, so I'm th- not getting in an oubliette. I'm uh, just telling you right now. I think we did the 10-minute challenge yeah. upstairs in Pontifra. I think we'll have the apartment that we're staying uh, in I, as I, our base, <laughs> and we'll take everyone down, it and everyone does 10 minutes in the oubliette on their own. Nah. Nope. Oh, I thought you didn't give a fuck, Finn. Nah, and we'll do it together. Is it pitch black? It's when the door shuts. There's no source of light. You can hold your hand there. You can't see anything. <laughs> ah, nah. I'll do can it. Can you with... understand that you don't need to be scared of ghosts to find that a lot? It's it is intense. People don't last like when they do like the vigils and things. There, when they've done the ghost hunts, they generally do a thing where they see who see who can last the longest in there because it is unpleasant. You know, like, no shit. You know, wh- whether you believe in ghosts or not, what happened in there is unpleasant. I'm gonna get blad at me. <laughs> I'm gonna take a flask round and get fucked. Right. So otherwise, I'll just end up jumping down the oubliette. <laughs> and just end it. There's also the torture just, chamber. <laughs> Nothing happens. In, end it. <laughs> You're just gonna be in an oubliette. I'm fucking ending it. Right, Carl. Yeah, yeah. I'll get out in a minute. I'm taking a flask round full of something vodka. Right. Cool. There's lots and lots of rooms for us to go and do things in, but even the bedrooms and the rooms we're staying in are haunted. Like I, I've I've been there. It's the only place I've ever seen. Um, well, I, something happened in the Parapod film where I, where I saw something, but it's the only other place I've been where I've seen something physically move on its own, and it was in the apartment we're staying in. It was a little brass peacock on the table. I saw just get flung across the room. And it yeah. went spinning in the kitchen area. And we were, like, looking at it like... Is there a nice no. room? No. Like a wacky warehouse or something? <laughs> There's no yeah. nice place. There's the old medieval wacky warehouse where if the oubliette was, was fun, they got the Scottish soldiers and they put them in the fucking ball pool. <laughs> they were like, God, it's squelchy down There's at the, the bottom. Dev- <laughs> There's the devil's... It's all the coke in it from before. There's the devil's walk at the front of the castle. Jewelry. 
right to go and walk on your own. It's there was. I'll tell you all the story when we get Why there. Why does but this there was get a, you off? There was. Look at you enjoying yourself. No, I, th- I think the you know what you can't see. Barry's like wiggling with pleasure. Like, <laughs> oh no, I'm moving. I'm moving my knee. I thought you were like wiggling. Like, no, oh the fucking oubliette. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I spent Christmas in the oubliette. No. Every Valentine's, come on, what last? We're going to the fucking oubliette. <laughs> no, I'm moving my knee, otherwise it locks. Um, but the, so the, there's tons like the history. Is incredible. Is there a nine-month-old baby and a fucking four-year-old anywhere near me? No. I will have a phenomenal night's sleep. I will see you in North Northumberland. Are you the first to sleep? Because that's a big mistake. What? The first person to fall asleep is in trouble, aren't they? No. Yeah. The thing is, everyone's not going to be in the same room. Are we all separate? We're all separate. No, We're obviously, all... I'm staying with someone. Um, well, well, yeah, there'll be two Adam's people Adam's going to be sleeping room. in Carl's fringe. Is there beds? Is it a bed? Yeah. Oh, yeah, they're, 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 they're nice apartments. They're oh, just... they're lovely apartments. I'd, I'd, no, I used to go and stay there every what? year for my birthday, but COVID, etc. Is it just I've single beds in just a room? Uh, the one that you and Adam will be in is a big <laughs> four, <laughs> is a big four poster Where's bed. Where's Finn? I'll share the bed. I don't give a fuck. Can oh, I no. bring my PS4? Is the electricity? Ye yes. old Wi-Fi. Golf game. No. Adam will <laughs> have a bad time. And there's no phone signal. <laughs> Adam's not going. It's the middle of nowhere. I'm telling you, Adam will put himself in the Ubilee. If he cannot, <laughs> if he can't go on Instagram and Twitter and check his emails, he's going to be in that Premier Inn by about quarter to 11. <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you now, I look, you can hype it up all you want. When I got to that house in Pontefract, I was like, "Ee God. Within 25 minutes, you're like, oh, this is just a place where people wind each other up. This sounds different, though. This is totally different. Oh, it different. is different. It does it, sound different. It, yeah, different. The Oubliette sounds scatty as can you, fuck. Can you bring up a picture on that screen? Absolutely, go on. Oh, can you just type in Chillingham Castle um, Dungeon? Chillingham Castle. Chillingham. Chillingham Castle. I say Chillingham, don't I? Chillingham. Right. Okay. Well, I think I had maps. Oh, that's the, so that's so that's like the that. torture chamber. Can you go at that one that's got the red sky? So yeah, just down, down, down. That's yeah, that one. So that's the courtyard. When you go in, we're staying in the rooms that are sort of uh, those windows at the top. Those right. are the rooms that we're going to. And be when in. was that red sky? And is it near <laughs> Middlesbrough? Hey, red sky at night. You're welcome. <laughs> <Bit of hat. laughs> Nothing wrong with that joke. I've been doing that joke for fucking 20 years. In fact, years. that middle picture... Cracking tits. Just down next to the... Yeah. No, no, along, along. Yeah, that, that's the oubliette. Oh. Right. Well, that's lovely. Can you put that in here? It's all in. Right. Now, do you need to be... Do you need to believe in ghosts to think that a medieval hole in the ground is a, a place that would be uncomfortable? Like, I don't suffer from claustrophobia... But that's going to make me feel horrible. And it's not because I think some Scottish ghosts are like, get the fuck out of my oubliette, by the way. I fucking died here in 1322, by the way. I just don't need to be scared of ghosts to think that's dreadful. Yeah. It's a place where people would die and then get kicked and in a hole. The tor- if the, the other pictures along there, that's the torture chamber. and that's in, So that's the rack. With an is that still there, the rack? Yeah, yeah, all the torture stuff's there. I'll have a go with that. So if you if you just go along that to, to Can like I use the my end, dick? next one along, yeah. So. Get a bit of length. Oh, um, <laughs> that's another view of the torture chamber. Right, okay, well, that's... So right. we'll, we'll just for the audio listeners, there was a lot of pictures of a creepy old fucking castle. Like, it's not rocket science. Where's the one with my bed where I'll be sleeping soundly and not pestered by fucking children and night feeds? I'm okay. telling you right now, I'm going to have a great time. Can we I, access each other's room? I cannot wait to watch you get wound up because you do and wind Carl up a bit and watch Adam Leave. lose his hairy mind and Finn and I will have a really nice time. Can, can I get to Dan's room? Yes. So I can scratch the door and shit at like 3am. <laughs> that won't be me, by the way, that'll be the ghosts. Uh, it's going to be dead scary, isn't it? <laughs> oh, is it a ghost or is it what I said? Yeah, it is, yeah. It's what I said I'd do. So four of us will be in one apartment and everybody else, the crew, will be in the one that's above us. 
Cool. Well, I'm looking forward to that. Freezing my fucking dick off. <laughs> Should we wrap up? Yeah. Trying to yeah. dip my balls in a lake at midnight. <laughs> I can't wait. It will be available on patreon.com slash have a word pod. In It'll be funny as fuck. February. I can't wait. It'll be like, we're going to have a good time, but I know. Yeah, I'm gonna it's going to be a proper laugh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Laura's like, right, we did the calendar, you know, like, where are you in the next couple of months? I was like, this day, I'm going to be in North Northumberland with these fucking idiots trying to scare at him. <laughs> I'm telling you right now, he's not staying in this castle. I don't. I'm. I don't think. I'm. I'm. I'm honestly got concerns that he'll get there in the court, look at it, and go, no, no, he won't. He won't. He's he, too. He'll be a trooper, he's, but he's he, too much of a team player. But I think he'll struggle. Um. Right. Well, I haven't asked one solitary fucking question. We just talked northern and what time are we? Ghosts. On? We're at break time. Okay. And we've got cunt in the gang. Let's go find in. cunt. Exciting stuff. Wag wag lids. Hope you're enjoying today's patron exclusive. We've got some new merch that you can see over my booby. Is this real? This is an ad. This. Oh, for the merch. For the merch that you're wearing. Get one of these ones. But when you buy it, get one that fits you. <laughs> they come in different sizes. But I would definitely maybe order one size up. Unless you want to feel like it's a Tammy Girl starter bra. Have a word pod dot com. It's where you get the merch from. And it'll save you wearing that pile of shite that you're wearing. Uh, at the we just said, don't be doing the mean thing. Oh, you look like a fucking pedo. Get some merch. But he can't help himself. They just, but look at them. Look through the camera at the fucking scruffy twat on the other side of it. I like you. I think you look good. Fucking pathetic. But you'll look better in Have A Word Pod merch. That's, that's what I was saying, just in a more polite way. And that's here. Because Carlo put the graphic in. Haveawordpod.com. If you can't read. Get on me. Nice one. Welcome back. Uh, very pleased to say that uh, through Barry's organisation and fucking connections, we've got Cunt from Cunt and the Gang. <laughs> Come on, mate. Uh, thanks for coming up. A uh, right old trek. Yes, yeah, uh, trek. But, you know, it's, it's going to be worthwhile. Heard a lot of good things from Barry. Right. Well, uh, I have to, uh, something to him because obviously, famously, you've just had your second push for Christmas number one yeah. with Boris Johnson is still a fucking cunt. Yeah. Mwah. Um, <laughs> and uh, I heard about you last year and I was like, I've never given a shit about the like Christmas number one. No, no, right. no one with pubes does. No. <laughs> <laughs> and this time, all of a sudden, through just this fucking stupid in-joke that we let get out of hand and yeah. Adam being mentally confident and then some betting happening. We were like, holy shit, we're, we're in the running for Christmas number one. And at first, I sort of like, through not knowing your work dead well, just felt like you were like a competitor. And this, you were unbeknownst to you, I was like, oh, fuck that guy. We're going to be like, we're going to be like the renegade. I uh, was the sign. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and as the week... I think like, it was like two days later, first, we yeah. were like, uh, actually... The first day of sales was so <laughs> funny because we were hyped. We'd done loads of pre-sales. We had three versions, which we thought was dead clever. Cunt and the gang have got 10 versions because you were playing the game. And honestly, on that Friday, the first day of sales, iTunes were like, you're third, fourth, and fifth. We were screenshotting it. Adam's like, we're fucking taking over the world, mate. We'll get a record deal. <laughs> And as the week, as it just, it was so painful watching us sort of just gently just disappear from relevance and watching you sort of stake your claim as a proper contender for Christmas number one. And when it became obvious that we weren't actually in the running for Christmas number one, I became, so, I just had so much respect for what you've done playing that horrible game and winning but also, like, all of us were like, yeah, go on, let's fucking... We, <laughs> yeah. I, I felt really behind Cunt and the yeah. gang. Uh, do, do you know what, though? Everything you've just described to me, I've had all those same feelings, like, last year and this year, because you've, you've, got, your, you've got your fan base, your solid fucking fans, who all go out on the first day and buy it, because we weren't all getting organised enough to sort out pre-sales, because I was still getting all the versions of the song together and needed to put them all out in one go. And... um that bit where you kind of go in and it all starts moving up, you're like, fucking yes, and you're doing all the screenshots. But to keep that momentum up, you've got to get people outside of your fan base to, A, discover it, and B, 
invest in it in yeah. that short amount of time. Yeah. And it's really fucking hard. Yeah, it and is- also, like, we've got a lot of people listen to this podcast and watch it, and then we're trying to get them to sign up to our Patreon, which is our subscription-based service, and we've managed to get 8,000 fucking like fellow bellends to buy into that, which is amazing. This is what like it's become our living. And then you think, well, that translates to we'll definitely be able to sell this many. But it's another stretch to be like, oh, you know this us being daft cunts yeah. trying to fucking ruin the Christmas number one. It's another thing to get them to do it. Like we learned the hard way that yeah, thousands of people will go, oh yeah, this is funny. But it's actually quite hard to get people mobilized, even though it's just some fucking clicks on the internet. Yeah. It, it, to actually get it going. It is really, it is really, really fucking hard. And also, you sort of need to do one as a dry run to know what to do yeah, the next time. Me, yeah. So last, last year, you did Boris Johnson is a fucking cunt. Yeah. Where did it... I mean, you'll have answered these questions loads, but I love that we're a podcast that instead of like trying to delete you from existence, like all of the fucking nonce Tory own like publishers and newspapers and all those journalists who try to... Dis- I want to know the story. Like what happened last year? You were like, I'm going to do this. Where did it come from? So last last year, um, uh, I'd, I'd put a book Kickstarter together for like, for for an autobiography that I wrote about the time when you know the time I was kind of gigging and and doing the fringe and all that, and when I did the book Kickstarter, I got got to me target, and then you have to do like a fucking stretch goal to try and get more people, you more people involved in it, you know. And so my stretch goal was to record a punk album because my stuff was always like plinky plonky electronic stuff that I recorded on my little bedroom studio. But I'd always had this idea to do a punk album. So my stretch goal was if I got a thousand backers for the book, I'd do this punk album. And the thousand backers all came through and then like, oh fucking hell, I've got to sort out a studio and a fucking band and all this. Which took like over a year. But in the time we were doing it, um Johnson uh, became the Prime Minister and it became evident quite closely that he uh, quite quite soon that he was a useless fucking cunt, <laughs> and, and so one of the one of the songs I reworked for the punk album was this old song I had called "If you don't like this song, you're a fucking cunt," and we just reworked it into Boris Johnson is a fucking cunt, and it was just sat there on the punk album that I gave out to all all the backers and put it up on Spotify, and then just one day in September last year, Ginger from the Wild Arts tweeted a link to it on Spotify and put Christmas number one question mark. And so it's totally complete, organic. Yeah, yeah, completely. It weren't, weren't planned at all. It was just sat So there is that the one that was, like, could people buy it independent of the album? Is that when it's... Yeah, stu- yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, they could, could because I, I just put it up to, you know, put it up onto iTunes and Amazon yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, through the digital distributor so people could just go and buy it. And it was Ginger from Wild Arts doing that. And then I know John Malta, who did the Rage Against the Machine campaign in 2009 because he's, he's from Essex as well. So he Which then, was so good. So it? he then tweeted a link to it, and then at the end of October, Charlie Brooker tweeted a link to it Sick. and put Christmas number one, and it all just kind of happened organically from there. I, I, I phoned up Mortar and just said, "Do you think this could happen?" And he's like, "Mate, I think it's got a chance." And so, um, yeah, I just put together a, a you know, like this was really fucking quickly cobbled together a couple of different versions because we were in lockdown. Um, you know, it was like. It weren't quite. Yeah, it weren't yeah, quite yeah, locked yeah. down at Christmas twenty twenty, was it? They'd, but it was. It, it was, was as good. It was like areas. Tier, yeah, tier four. things were fucked. Yeah, I think things were basically fucked. So we we just um, put together a couple of versions of it and and just went for it. And in that week that people were buying it, I was still cobbling together different versions and I just c- getting them. I can remember being a fan, and obviously I was doing the streaming thing on my computer, and then it was like a community of cunt fans were going. Right, there's a new version out, so we've all got to go and download the new version yeah. now. I've never listened to half of them, if I'm honest. But, but it was it was about just getting the sale and the stream. But but that's that's the thing is you know when when the kind of criticisms come in about it, oh it's a shit song, and you know oh it's only six words, none of that matters. Because that's it's, not it's the all, fucking point, yeah, is it? Exactly. Yeah, like you're just fucking missing the point. It's Someone a, messaged us and went, "Why didn't you do a Christmas song?" And you're like, "Because." We were fucking about. Yeah, because we're not a 17. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) because we didn't sit in a boardroom going, what would work this Christmas? We were fucking around. Finn did basically a song about the pod that was all in jokes about my wife leaving. And then we were like, "Ah, we should throw the money at a studio recorder. It was like, we should just release it for Christmas number one. We never sat down and went, 
we'd like to get Christmas number one. Like you're saying, it just happened through just a beautiful set of events. Yeah. That it's not like you sat down and went, oh, well, let's write a masterpiece and really try and take no, no, down that's, Christmas that's, number one. That, that's the thing. It's, it's like probably the least words I've ever put in a song that wasn't an <laughs> instrumental. But yeah. <laughs> but you know what? Those words, those six words, they really do resonate, don't they? <laughs> but do you, do you know? Do you know what? There's there's something to be said for having a very simple message for people to understand. You know, like that thing, like you're saying, your patrons don't automatically go and click that, and if there's two clicks. It makes it, it's, you know, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. because everything is so fucking instantaneous now. Keep it simple. Yeah, just and, yeah, and it couldn't be amazing. any more simple to go in. Here's a song called Boris Johnson is a fucking cunt. Do you agree with it or not? If you agree with it, go and get it. If you don't agree with it, well, fucking fine. Go and, you know. Yeah. Vote Tory <laughs> and die early. Yeah. Um, sausage roll based any, heart failure. Have you had oh, any my comeback? God. <laughs> Have you had any comeback from like any government officials or any? No, no, nothing. Not, not, not really. Don Don Butler, the Labour MP, tweeted all together now. Boris Johnson is a dot 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 and a little singing face in in the week. But that's that's the only politician yeah. who may or may not have referred, referred to. Yeah, I don't think you're going to be at the Labour Party conference. <laughs> Hello, Con. <laughs> can you come to Blackpool? Could be the new things can only get better. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then doing that che- cheesy like trying to shake everyone's hand down the line um, so last year you got number five yeah uh, which is having played this game <laughs> Good. and knowing that you I mean we sold this year we sold the fourth most sales behind you behind uh, the uh, sausage roll nonce lad baby and his pals um, we were chuffed with that but where we lost out is the streams. We just had no idea. Like when Mariah Carey is in the running for Christmas number one and she's not sold one single copy, it's just people on Spotify playlists yeah. playing it. How how chuffed were you with fifth last year? Was it a surprise? I mean, yeah, I, I, was, I was beyond fucking chuffed because last year we had no expectations and it, it went into the midweek at number 19 and then it felt like my, we had a little little dip just after that, and then momentum kind of gathered as the because the newspapers all covered it last year. At number when it got to number nineteen, the Mail, I think the Express, and you know, and and, and the Mirror all done a little piece about you know this anti Boris Johnson songs in the vine for Christmas number one, and that gave it the boost to get. Well, it trying up. to slag you off, I imagine if it's no, the no, Mail and no, Express. No, they were all they were all pretty just like this is what it is, which which I was really surprised about, but. Remember the the British press have to build something up before they cunt it off. Right. They 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 never just cunt something off straight away. Yeah. And so I think what they were building up towards was we're just going to tell you what it is, and then we you know, and then I, I was I was sort of thinking, all oh, right, and then at the end of the week they're going to pull out the song about raping a paper boy and fucking finish me off. But just to check, <laughs> <laughs> that is a song. Yeah, it's yeah. one of the catchiest songs. What's the trilogy called that I found out about? Wanking and crying. The wanking and crying. Wanking and crying trilogy. Yeah. I haven't listened to this, but I've become a fan of you in the last couple of hours properly. <laughs> just hearing what your songs are about and what you're calling your trilogies. Fucking You've amazing. Tw- Twenty years of backstory there, there to work your way through. There's a song that I listened to on the way here. It came on and shuffle in the car. Which is why I can never have shuffle on when I've got mum in the car. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> Barry, Barry's iPod is not welcome at kids' parties. <laughs> it's because it's it's our pass the parcel to <laughs> I to people. <laughs> it's either like there's a good ninety percent chance it's going to be Eurasia. There's about a two percent chance it's going to be Sparks, and there's a good eight percent chance it's going to be Cunt. Right. So it's. One came on in the car on the way here, and it's a song called 50 Things You, Th- you Should Think About to Stop You Doing Your Beans, right? right. Which is 50 <laughs> things to think about at the point of ejaculation. To make it last And longer. it's like a list of the most horrific things, <laughs> but to a really <laughs> upbeat tune. And you can't have it come on, and you can't not laugh at it. What, I mean... Some just in terms of like song titles, I'm now intrigued. Are there any that just some of your favourites from over the years? Um, wanking over a pornographic Polaroid of an ex-girlfriend who died. Uh, <laughs> S- snappy title. <laughs> that, that's, that's the longest one. Nobody spunks up a cunt anymore. <laughs> it's more of a nostalgia one. That. One. <laughs> 
sexy <laughs> ki- Jimmy Savile and the sexy kids. Yeah. <laughs> How have we not had you on this podcast already? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like this was meant to happen. <laughs> oh my god! Uh, amazing. So, what? So this year rolls around. Did you? Were you? Because you've not been gigging, have you? You've been. Out, you've been. No, I, I, I packed up gigging in 2016, but I was just. It was just me on my own up until that point. You know, just like trawling around in me full fiesta with me little hand puppet, little cunt in a rucksack. Uh, and it was it was quite, you know, I, I built a little following up, but it was completely outside the circuit and outside outside of everything. I started playing in like band venues and just kind of built it up. And it was around the time MySpace just kind of came about, and YouTube was just kind of starting off. And so I got a little, you know, a little audience all around the country, and I'd just go and play in pubs and, and band venues to like fifty or hundred people. And it gradually kind of built up to playing to like a couple of hundred in some places. But it was always just like completely outside the circuit. That's pretty punk, isn't it? If we're talking about punk, I know it's not like, yeah, like but, genre wise, but, but actually, in like. But, but for me, punk's not about, you know, the four, sound. Four bloke, yeah, the four blokes with guitars and drums. It's, it's a mindset thing of doing what you fucking want, speaking yeah. the truth when other people are trying to hide it. And, you and know, fuck the and, system. Yeah, just fuck, fuck the system because it is, it is, it's fucked. It's fucking you, so fuck it. Yeah. So so last year happened and you hadn't been gigging for four years. No. Five, like. No, no, no. It, it, was com- it was completely like, it, it was organic in that way because through lockdown, I started doing a, a, a sort of YouTube um, sh- show like ev- every night. I was going to do it every night of lockdown. Uh, just reading a chapter from my book, and I got right the way through the book, uh, you know, thinking, "All oh, right, we're not we're not going to be locked down for a month, are we?" And then, of course, oh Jesus! Yeah. <laughs> and so that I finished the book after like thirty seven nights. I'm like, what the fucking hell am I going to do now? And so I just kind of sung some songs because I've got a back catalogue of a couple of hundred songs. Sung some songs, read stories from wank mags, and the content <laughs> just it just I got used to fucking love them. <laughs> You're too. You'll be too young for this. Never done that. The mag magazines, like if you found your dad's pornos, like you'd know every picture. Mm. Like you'd be like, the, you know, the back of the hand, like the yeah. front of her pubes. <laughs> you would at the. I think my dad had a few mags that he thought he'd hidden, and I knew exactly where the creases were, the folds were, yeah. and then you'd be like, ah, you'd be, you'd have looked at them so much that you sort of the pictures didn't do anything. So then you actually start reading it, yeah. like the. The, the dirty wife stories and like the busty milfs and everything and some some pervs were like well, I know what works here yeah <laughs> and that, for for the thirteen year old Dan Nightingale I was like this is great um, <laughs> it's great it's great reading. did you read them out yeah it's it's great reading them in your forties because you're just like this never happened this, <laughs> this never happened mate did it it's a bit like it's I've bit always like... fancied the girl from the bakers. <laughs> <laughs> You got to suspend disbelief, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. In many ways, poor mugs are like Harry Potter. You know, you don't want to get into the plot <laughs> plot holes. Yeah. Um, so, so when twenty twenty one came around, you've had number five. Is that sort of like just mo? Like you're a fan, Barry? Was that like was your fan base after all the stuff you did in lockdown and reading about the girl in the bakery? Are you at this point? Is it basically reignited everyone? Do you know that that was that was the weird thing was just before Christmas last year, I'd, I'd done those kind of lockdown shows and the content I was producing had got so dire the audience had dwindled from like you know like six or seven hundred at the start down to about one hundred and ten hardcore wrongans yeah, who were just yeah. there every night you know and, and would listen listen to me talking about Vera Lim watching. Uh, you know, prisoners of war get raped, and uh, it got really dark and really, <laughs> really, really, really fucking. You know, because because you feel like you've got to keep raising the bar, but really you have you haven't. But <laughs> <laughs> I really feel like we relate to that on this. Yeah, well, yeah. When you, when you're like, God, I feel like we've said so much. What about if we push it a little bit further? Well, if, if, in some cases it was because when you were doing Cunt's Corona Club, which was the the the, the lockdown thing. You had to have a, a warning, which was the, the pre Me Too warning. Oh, the, yeah. <laughs> because as we were saying earlier, some things don't age well. Yeah, and so they'd have. To I be... think raping a paperboy is timeless, though. Is that fair to say? <laughs> Do you know what? At the gig a couple Anyone? of weeks ago, there wasn't a single person not singing. 
<laughs> Honestly. And, and to be fair, some of them were retired paper some boys. Some of them were paper boys. <laughs> yeah. Also, they're on bikes. They must have wanted it a bit. <laughs> anyway. Um, they're uh, all on e-scooters now. You'd have yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Just... <laughs> Just wait till someone's battery's fading. <laughs> We've got a straggler! He can only go 15 miles. <laughs> um, <what? laughs> I've just got this image of a paper boy going, come on! <laughs> just refusing to run. If the battery goes, I'm getting bummed. And some bloke in a courtier to be him with a bag of sweets and some puppies. Going any minute now. Do you, think, do you think they've got the sweets and the puppies on the chase? <laughs> Cortina's doing 15 miles an hour, but like, these are the fucking tools of the trade. Come back! You ain't seen shit! <laughs> High speed sweets. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh. So, so with this year, how did I like? How did it? At what point in 2021 were you like, did you know instantly you're going to do it, do it again? Uh, no, no, because you sort of you can only get so much goodwill from people on on one idea, and and like I've, it's Paul Paul McCartney, I think, said you can't reheat a souffle, and so <laughs> I was <laughs> I was I was very very aware. And uh, no, I, had, I had a conversation with Mortar, who did the Rage Against the Machine thing, um, you know, after the, after the Boris Johnson thing last year. And it was him that, that, that uh, uh, made me aware of that phrase, you can't re-eat a souffle. And, you know, you think, no, he's right. The moment, the moment's gone. And so when this year kind of come around, a couple of people said, you're going to do anything this year? And, you know, like, I feel like we did it last year. Um, and then... I went for went for a beer with Mort because we were talking about putting a book together uh, about last year's you know chart yeah, yeah. chart thing like because um, KLF uh, the KLF done this book called the Manual all about how to have a number one hit single which is just one of my favourite reads. Well, I and, fucking loved and, KLF and this but like it, it was it must have come out what sort of like twenty twenty something years ago and so a lot of the kind of stuff in it is is out is out of date now. Do you remember K- KLF? No, what's K- are they KLF? KLF are like. Sort of hip hop were they? Yeah, like well, they, they, uh, they came out of sort of hip hop and rave scene, didn't they? And we're in they had Tammy Wynette. Yeah, yeah. I mean that was like the absolute ultimate. But it but, was such a weird like. But before they did the KLF, they they um had this group called the Time Lords, and they sampled uh, Gary Glitter's rock and roll, obviously pre pre Shame Glitter, uh, and <laughs> uh, and mixed it up with the Doctor Who theme tune, and uh and. There's just this video of them in this like American cop car just chasing all these Daleks made from cardboard boxes around. It's just fucking brilliant, and and it got to number one. Punk. And and they, but it, it completely was, you know, outside of the fucking like fuck the music industry. This is what we're doing, and and so they wrote this book about it, which you know, whenever I've gone to do anything, it's just really inspiring. Just hearing people that were that far outside all the mainstream shit that you fucking get, you know, bombarded with day after day. So me, me and Mortal were talking about writing a book, you know, about our experience and how to do it nowadays. Because obviously, like, the world's changed a lot with social media, you know, and, and podcasting. You can get get a, a good fucking group of people to give you, a you know, a good start on something. Shout out the lids. And so, so we, yeah, we, we was, um, we were talk, met to talk up, talk about that. And uh, I sort of said to him, have you got anything in the, this, this was like, October time, I said, have you got... Sorry, i just fucking seen fake taxi up there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm slightly distracted. Um, <laughs> so, Do you not know how this podcast ends? <laughs> it's really like, fucking brilliant. <laughs> it's a weird one. Barry's a big fan and he's going to show you at the end. Where's the taxi? Yeah, yeah. He hasn't got money for a fare. <laughs> Excellent. I've got some room in the back, actually. Right. <laughs> how to lose patrons. <laughs> Well, there's a little key more legs. Sorry. Um. <laughs> so, 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 yeah. I, I'm, I met up with Malta to talk about doing this book, and said to him, "You know, have you got anything going on for Christmas this year?" And he went, "No." He said, "Like a couple of things, but nothing that's really going to do anything." And he said, "Well, have you had any ideas?" I said, "Well, I did have one idea, but I don't know whether I can be asked to do it. It's to do Boris Johnson. He's still a fucking cunt to the tune of Gary Glitter's Rock and Roll." And he just sat there and pissed his pants. And you know, you think. Can't really be fucking bothered, but 
He went, you've got to do it, mate. I said, well, I'll put a demo together. So the next day, that's what I done was just was kind it of... Was it the repetition that was put in? Like, because, like, as a comic, obviously, when you write a bit, you, you know what it's like? You've got a funny bit, and then you're like, oh, that's good. And then you do it again, and then you do it again. And it's never as good no. as that first time you get that first laugh from it. Like, there is a point with material and jokes where you're like, oh, this works, and you're like, you have to fuck it off, otherwise it goes a bit stale. Like, yeah, repetition is kind of not funny, isn't it? Like, no, no but, but it is the very fucking essence of pop music. Yeah. yeah. Like, and so that's and also, with Lad Baby being such a annoying, dire, repetitive cunt, doesn't that... I mean, was that part of it as well? Like, well, if I'm doing it twice, this cunt's doing it, what, four times? Do you, do you know what? At the start of it, it, it wasn't because he, he, it was looking like he wasn't going to do a record, but I had in mind that he was going to pop up and do, pop up on Elton and Ed's one as, right. as as an extra version of that to get his his fourth number one. But as it turns out, they just fucking re-recorded Elton and Ed's one. So I sort of called it right, but... Um, oh, so he he said third is the end. No, no, they, they wanted to promote their fucking sausage roll book to kids, so they kept quiet about what they were doing for Christmas number one, so that they could. That's what I'm saying about giving people one fucking message when they want to buy something. Yeah, so fair they, enough. Yeah, yeah. Their baby promoted their sausage roll book and then come out with a you know. That's with, what with, we did wrong as well because we we had a live show. In December, which is we massively yeah, you were promoted. pushing. So we had two things we were pushing, and the message just got yeah. skewed. Didn't it, it? Yeah, but you only you only realise this after you after you kind of totally, done it a couple it? of times. Like people need one message, one fucking button, and go. Yeah, click. Yeah, well, like yourself, we're self taught doing this. It's what you work it out as you go along. Yeah. As long as you're doing it for the right reasons, you'll make a couple of mistakes along the way. Yeah, and I. To be fair to the lad, baby, they're successful at what they do. I fucking hate what they do. Yeah. But they've obviously worked it out a little bit. There's just such an air of cynic, like so cynical, do, do a know, lot of it. The, the idea that someone can be become a millionaire from making charity records, I think is just the product of a fucking fucked up Tory society. Yeah. You know, and it, it, raise, you know, it raises money for food banks, but fuck me. Like selling stuff off the back of poverty and hunger and like the food bank choirs, you know what I mean? It's just fucking, it's just raping people's heartstrings. And I think, yeah, when you basically admitted that you vote Tory to then be like, you know, we're going to raise money for food banks, you're like, I think there's a, a little more going on than this, isn't there? Well, it's, it's Jimmy Savile, basically, isn't it? He's look, <laughs> that's exactly what I'm I was doing thinking. all this good to divert people away from the bad thing I'm doing, right. you know. Yeah. I'm not saying Lair Baby's as bad as Jimmy Savile. That's rather bad. <laughs> even, even I was like, eh. <laughs> well, everyone else can make their own mind up about that, can't they? Yeah. So, so they've made millions from but, their campaigns. But the, the food banks haven't made millions. Of course, yeah. But they have. But they, but they have. And they, the, to be fair, they have raised a lot of money for those food banks, haven't they? But like, yeah, yeah, but there's a lot of business going on in and around that. Comparatively, you never hear how much one of their campaigns makes for the food banks, and comparatively, compared to what they've made off of sponsorship deals and knock-on sales of sausage roll fiend And writing for the rag as well. like Writing for the, the enemy as well. They write for that paper. Don't Who they? do yeah. they write for? The, that, oh, the, that the red one. Yeah. Right, okay. Oh, there, there you go. I mean, it's just, it couldn't be any more fucking Tory system than that, could it? Yeah. Yeah. And so... Obviously, in in defence of that, every time everyone well, they've raised so much money for food banks, which is positive. Yeah, but when they've done such a good job of virtue signalling around that, like, yeah, that's great. That money raised is great, but like, they really, that's what they've stood on at every point. There's a lot more going on. Yeah. So then again, I don't know, it was then that. again, then again. To be fair, when we put our like, I'm not. I'm just trying to play devil's advocate. Like we wanted our name to be out there. And yeah, everything. of course, yeah. But, but like, ours wasn't originally for um, charity. We were doing it for us, and we were like, you know what? We'll give the money to charity. Yeah, we didn't feel comfortable. We didn't start it as a and charity. We've raised thing. over two hundred and forty-five pounds for <laughs> charity. So <laughs> good. Good you're welcome, you. guys. Thanks for your support. It was you know? that video we did. Leading up to it, going, I don't think we're going to get it. Can you please, please support it? You're crying it in. It's yeah, like, well, fuck off. If it didn't, if it was just about getting the money to the food bank, why was it so important to him that it was number one? 
Yeah, just give money to the food banks. It doesn't matter if it's number two or number three. The important thing is, is people are buying it and that food bank's getting the money. The status of being number one shouldn't mean anything. You know, and that's why we didn't, you know, we did it for the charities. And us getting, really gracious us getting up. Bearing out the race yeah. like that. Well, we, that's why we buyed out of the top <laughs> 100. Because for us, that money raised for charity... Uh, so much more important than being in the top 100 ah, it's too mainstream the top 100 yeah. top, the yeah. top 2 apart from for cunt which was really good yeah. Yeah. so that <laughs> uh, made me feel right slag <laughs> so cunt, got, could you bring the mic a bit closer oh, to you sorry mate um, so you said you got to October and so you, yeah got, got to October and, and basically then just decided to yeah de- demo it and just see see what it came out like and I just demoed it with the loops from the kind of original uh, original song and, and it Played it to a couple of mates, and they're like, "You got to fucking do it. You got to do it." And so, I, I try not to ask for favors like all year round. So when you do something like this, you can just pull in, pull in favors, and um, got a couple of people to remix it. And just I ate up cassette, cassette boy, yeah. Um, just you know, because because I knew he, he, you know, he was a an, anti Tory and talented as and, well, and, and and also just. Fucking amazing, yeah, you know. Yeah, just yeah. Produce- another another form of punk, in it. Like, yeah, it's yeah, exactly I mean, what he does. Yeah, and so yeah, hit hit him up just kind of out of blue, and uh, and he was up for it, and done this fucking amazing version that also just like really kicked it on another level. But and you did the video, you did a proper video. Yeah, yeah, but but last year we were all in lockdown, so we were all just shutting our sheds. You know, uh, I just did a little animated thing on my computer last year, but this year, which is impossible to find online now. Yeah, it got it got chucked off YouTube, and it was really funny. I'll, it, I'll stick it back up somewhere. Okay, right. But uh, but yeah, who did you get to play Boris Johnson in the? Because in the video, a police car is chasing around Boris Johnson in it's what? The goal, lo- it's the goal. It's Ecto One. Is yeah, Ecto One? Yeah. Oh no, car. it's not. Of course, it's the Bugos. So car. I, yeah, yeah. I had this uh, uh, guy who lives around the corner to me. At Halloween, he does his house up with sort of zombie stuff, and has the Ghostbusters car parked out the front. And so I just went and knocked. Oh, that's cool as I fuck. just went and knocked him up. It was on the drive. Just went and knocked him up, and I said, "You are that out?" He went, "Not really." He said, "I'll just stick it out the front of the house at Halloween." I said, "What did you do with it the rest of the year?" That's just me right to work. <laughs> <laughs> and so um, I, I just said, I great. just said to him, "Do you fancy ironing out?" He went, well, "What's it for?" I went, "Well." <laughs> and, and explained about, and he'd heard of the song last year, and and he just went, oh, well, yeah, I suppose so. And so, um, yeah, he, he let us let us borrow his car, but because we were going to film it like a, a bit of a drive away, and it's an R Edge Volvo, he said, do you mind if I just drive it there, and then you can kind of drive it? We were going to hire this air, air airstrip, but it turned out the farm was a cunt, so we didn't. Uh, and we got <laughs> we got a mate's kind of industrial yard uh, to film it in, and. Uh, it looks like where people get murdered, doesn't it? Oh, <laughs> like it really oh there was some bobbly bits of ground there as well. <laughs> yes. Yeah, definitely. It looks like, you know, in, in Snatch at the end when it all starts going fucking a little bit pear-shaped and they're on that, like, waste the, ground and the dog the fucks dog. off. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's got that vibe, on it? Yeah. So, yeah, so it was a couple of days before and I thought, oh, fuck, we ain't got anyone to play Boris Johnson. So I rang up Kevin, whose Ghostbusters car it was, and said, listen, you're going to be there. Do you fancy <laughs> fancy being Boris Johnson? And he went, this gets weirder and weirder. <laughs> but but he did it and he was fucking brilliant. This guy's game, isn't he? Could oh. you lend us <laughs> Ecto-1? Could you also run around and play yeah. Boris Johnson? But uh, he, he, he just got it straight away, like, Turn up in his blue suit, done that little run like he'd shit himself, like you imagine Boris would. Yeah, <laughs> it was great. The fucker can't stand up properly. Like, it's no, yeah, the waddle, yeah. the weird little I, running I, I, waddle. I, I really liked the um, the retro Top of the Pops video you did. That that was that was the original I, video. Oh, we was that go- the original that, one? That was the one we were going to do for it, and uh, we'd, we'd done that at our rehearsal room, just, you know, blacked it up, uh, the room, not ourselves. Um, <laughs> and... Uh, yeah, and, and and just make it look like an old top of the pop studio. Got half a dozen dis- it really dis- disinterested kind of extra sort of dancing around like yeah. they did in seventies top of the pops. And then Savile did make yeah. a brief cameo. <laughs> yeah, a little, a little Easter egg of Savile. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then so how did it? How did the, like we watched you go towards the top, and we were disappearing away, like genuinely like how I just don't, how did you do it? Like I mean, it's so imp- it, it's. Um, Fucking great. Where did you end up? You ended four, fourth. Ended up at four, five. Five. At, at the end of the week. Right, okay, yeah. cool. 
I mean, without without any coverage, without being mentioned by anyone, like it was all social media and just your fans. And so, this last last year, I would have said it got to number five because all my people went and bought it in the in in the first day, like all me hardcore people, and then the kind of people that are on the mailing list who aren't Patreons or or regular viewers of the Corona, you know, me me kind of on online online show, your kind of secondary group of fans would kind of find out about it through the buzz on social media. And then after them, it would go out to just the general public and people going like, well, I'm, you know, I mean, Boris cancelled Christmas midweek last year. So then it went out to them. But this year, I think it was purely like hardcore fans and, and the sort of secondary group of fans just went and bought all the fucking versions of it. And and so when it didn't go out via the press, um, it didn't matter because we had a kind of solid base there. And then and you had a very strong message that really still like <laughs> I, I, I mean, mean, never in my lifetime has there been a prime minister that you are so wholeheartedly convinced is still a fucking cunt. No, no, but it's that's the thing. He's the best PR man you can fucking get because he is just a cunt. And 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 he lie <laughs> he lies, you know, like Prime Ministers before have fucking lied. But, but you've got lies. to do it better, haven't you? Yeah, he just lies so fucking blatantly. And the, the worst thing about him is, like, I feel genuinely fucking, like, nostalgic about Theresa May. <laughs> <laughs> That's fucking awful, isn't it? You know. But... He, <laughs> but Gone yeah. too soon. Yeah. He's, he's, he's such a cunt. And, and then, just before the end of the week, um, Lab Baby, in a... Um, uh, interview with the official charts website um, s- came out and slagged off people that had bought our song. Said said like you know basically they they, they asked him about the runners and riders in the um, Christmas number one race. And while he was crying, while he dabbing was, his tears with twenty pound notes, going, I don't even think they're giving it to food banks. Yeah, he's Short dabbing talk. his eyes with a sausage roll, but oh still found God. time to just he called people that bought the song uh, a certain sort of person. And it just fucking... It, and the rage that went through us. It just, we all it, went right and we all changed galvan- our Twitters to that sort of person. It just galvanised... You get him, Barry. <laughs> we, were, we were like, fuck him. And then you released them all on Bandcamp and it, we were all so fired up. We were all like, fuck it, throw another six quid in. Yeah, it was, yeah you can do a 50p on Bandcamp. So it, it was just a, <laughs> multi, it was a multi-tiered approach. Well, uh, well done, mate. It's fucking brilliant. And... Uh, yeah, what a way to uh, fuck the system. I love it that they were all against you and tried to basically delete it from existence. Yeah, and it got the momentum because we know how hard it is to pitch in and around that that yeah. that top ten, and uh, that's fucking ace. So, are you gigging again now? Is this is this the start of you? I I, I done half a dozen gigs before Christmas with with the band because. Uh, was sort of like a four-piece punk band now. And you went to one of them, didn't you? Yeah. You went to Nottingham? Yeah, I went to Nottingham. All right, cool. Is it Nottingham? Because someone Not, said... Because they were saying Nottingham. Nottingham. How this? How do you say Nottingham? Nottingham. Because I say Ingham, but then again, I'm Geordie. Nottingham. Whereas, yeah, Nottingham. I think yeah, people in Nottingham, Nottingham, in Nottingham. In Nottingham say Nottingham. What are the... Um, you said before, there were seven questions that you put on every post. Oh, yes, because you, you did a sort of post-match report after Christmas... Where you thanked everybody and then had a few criticisms of some of the press, but then also you had seven questions. Yeah, for lad, baby. Yeah, which um, I believe they're not. I, I haven't had any answers to them as yet. No. But I mean, they haven't got to answer me. They, I, I, I just think if they're going to go and do charity records in future, it's just kind of things that need talking about in terms of personal gain and gain for your charity. You know, and, and just being transparent about how much of people's 99p goes towards the charity because I think there's a lot of PR companies and record companies taking a cut of it. Yeah, when you say profits, that's a, it's not a catch-all, well, is it? Well, I, I saw Elton John, Ed Sheeran and the Trussell Trust all, uh, all tweet saying all proceeds go to charity. And it's not all proceeds, is it? It's, it's all profits. Um and you know, no one knows what the profits are, which I don't want to. I don't want to keep going on about it because it looks like sour grapes. But I can't compete with a fucking 
you know, like a, a, a big multi-million pound fucking PR company. Yeah, and he, and he fucking these. started it anyway. Well, exactly. He fucking started it. Well, it takes a certain sort of cunt to keep fucking <laughs> ramming sausage rolls down the public's fucking throat, doesn't it? Yeah. But the thing is, is everything he posts now on social media, whenever he flags it up, and I think it'll happen forever more because people have got a little screen grab like, of, those seven, of those seven questions. Anytime he does anything, people are just going to post those seven questions. I think he's done now. I think Twitter have sure. found I found them out. But but the thing is, he'll he'll just. I think he'll go crying to the fucking rag. Do you think? Uh, there's twi- a so, there's Twitter a sob trolls story. And, you know, do do yeah. the Twitter trolls thing. He'll come off Twitter and then they'll just stay on YouTube and Instagram. Yeah, maybe. Oh fuck him! I'm bored of talking about that cunt anyway. Um, Away from the charts, I wanted to ask you about what I think is one of the funniest, most inventive stunts that I saw performed as part of the comedy industry that is Edinburgh. Um, when are we ta- when are we talking with the, with you at the fringe? When it, you're talking the noise? Uh, n- two thousand and nine to two thousand and sixteen. All right, okay. But, but cool. I've, done, I've done the whole the whole thing from two thousand and nine. To 2013 or 14 right and then just like went up for a couple of odds and sods yeah she's a lot easier in it just yeah. just having a little jolly up and then being like oh, i can't be asked in a full month oh, but do you know what I, I quite like the i like the full month because you get the whole you know you get the whole fucking gamut of emotions don't you it's like the full roller coaster ride oh, it's so of tense yeah you know of of being there for the being there for the build up you know the kind of the, the middle bit and the triumphant finale or or not a few tears in the middle <laughs> Yeah, yeah, definitely. Bit of a, uh, it comes a bit of a slog that three or four weeks. Um, but yeah, because because you because you were never part of the of the comedy industry. You know, you were never like you didn't do circuit gigs, for example, did you? Nah. Or you know, because there's a bit in your book where you talk about speaking to big agents, and they were just very dismissive and very yeah. and and then that's when you decided, oh, I'm just going to do this on my yeah. own terms. Yeah. Um, so then you went up, did the fringe, which the circuit seems to think of it being its own thing, and then you went up and continued to play your own game, and that involved a bit of promotion, involving some stickers, and I and you won the Cunning Stunt Award for it. So I was just wondering if you could, do you know about what happened with the stickers? Go on. So uh, I'd done done a couple of years uh, a full run at the Meadow Bar, which was like a little kind of upstairs venue. Oh, I already. I, I've just remembered what the stickers are. Yeah. Because <laughs> I was at the fringe, same time as this. I was doing full shows, same time. Oh, right. Yeah, I know. Go on. Did yeah. you get stickered? I don't. Did you have your mouth open on your poster or were you bent over? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. So I, I, I don't think I did. Also, I didn't have any money, so I didn't have loads of posters out. Yeah. If you were putting these stickers on me, you were like halfway to fucking like Clyde Bank. It was like I was my posters weren't around. Yeah, I, I a few bigger comedians going. It's just not funny. We spent thousands of pounds. Oh, I, 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 I had all that. And and do you want to tell so, everyone so what, what, it, what is it for the people who don't know? So so what it was a, the first couple of years going up the fringe. You, you give out flyers, and the standard thing is you have five thousand flyers done, and you have to go out and just basically distribute them to people that don't really want to take them because they've already been given four thousand flyers that particular day. And so I, I had the idea to have stickers done instead that I'd give to people as they left the show each night, and they could go and stick them on other people's posters to advertise my show, and they were stickers in the shape of a crudely drawn cock and bollocks. <laughs> <laughs> and I've got to be honest, I, I, didn't, I, I didn't think of it as a publicity stunt, and it was just meant to, to save me the fucking effort of going and giving out flyers. And so on each bollock was a little QR code that people could scan and it'd have all the details to Beautiful the show. Done. And They so, were fucking everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> they they were fucking everywhere. Like, I did. And and the more prominent the poster, there are a few spots in Edinburgh around Teviot Square as you walk down past the museum, as you the courts. There's one. There's like there's some really big and they the campaigns that got, they are ten twenty thirty thousand pound advertising campaigns and more. So the more prominent the poster, the bigger they are, and there are a lot of open mouths. There are a lot. Jack, Jack Russell Kane got it. Russell Kane had one with him going, 
<laughs> Every one of those posters I saw had a cock right at, right at <laughs> Mate, Russell Kane's never done a poster that doesn't look like he's about to get yeah. bummed or something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, he's like, he loves it. He knows what he's doing. Yeah, yeah so, he's, he's, oh, I remember saying at the time his poster looked like it had, had a cock photoshopped out of it. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking look! I love Barry's laugh. I love when, when Barry really goes. It so I I was because I, I wasn't at the fridge then, but I was watching it from afar, finding it so entertaining that professional clowns were getting really upset that the that their posters were getting cocks and balls. Oh, stuck comedians on them. can be the least people, funny cunts. People had a real sense of humour bypass about it. They were Edinburgh. Happy. It's the Edinburgh Festival. It's not meant to be fucking funny. <laughs> I, but I, because I, I didn't drink in all the, you know, the the clicky yeah, bars yeah, yeah. and stuff. I, I, I had a couple of mates who were sort of doing shows up there who said like, you know, they'd uh, overheard people in the bars going that fucking prick. Well, he's going to get his when Avalon sue him for fifty grand, and you know, just like really fucking looking forward to the demise of it. But I, I think it was maybe was it like five or six days in, Alex who ran the free fringe that I used to uh, free festival that I used to play, um, just rang me up and said, listen, mate going to have to stop giving the cocks out because <laughs> I, I was just I, I envisaged me stood by the door because you know you do like a bucket collection on the free fringe at the end of the night and I thought I'd be giving one person a, a cock at the end of the night in an orderly fashion but people were just grabbing big handfuls of them <laughs> and that's why after a few days like Edinburgh was just plastered with them but um I had two I remember guys, it. I remember the whinge I had two guys turn up um from the uh uh Edinburgh City environmental in their stab vests and hives just basically with all these photocopied um, sheets where they'd taken photos and they basically said to me they'd spent all day pulling off over 100 cocks. <laughs> <laughs> but then it led to the phenomena of the ghost cock, yeah, the which ghost- was when the sticker had been peeled away, it would peel off the bottom of the poster so you'd just see the shape of a ghostly cock where it was. <laughs> So they didn't go away. Oh, well, like a tan line. Yeah. Oh. But what had you done wrong there? Just they, like like they, lawfully they faced other people's posters and pe- people just like people don't like to see themselves with a cock near their face. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's a that's yeah yeah. It's a fact. It's a fact. Apart from Russell K, <laughs> who doesn't mind. Um, but one one comedian come up and like got me up against the wall and w- went like, if if I see one of those stickers on my posters. And I was like, fuck off, you haven't even had a sticker on your poster yet. I'm sort of gutted that I didn't get it. <laughs> I had one little fucking poster, like, little draw a little dick. <laughs> this one's for it you, just Dan. just feel part of the gang. <laughs> Someone who hadn't had a dick on their poster got annoyed on behalf About of... About the idea of having a dick on their poster. Oh, my God. Edinburgh's so commercial and wonky now. It's gone from being like a fringe arts festival to just a really corporate works fair. But if, and if, it do, uh, and the challenge of that is not appreciated anymore. There's too much money to be made. Like, it's not the point. It's not meant to be the point. Now I, I had a I had a mate who went up and done a, a cabaret show, done twenty twenty three nights in a hundred capacity venue at twelve quid a ticket, completely sold out, and come out of the fringe breaking even. Like, yeah. it's just a fucking big business, isn't it? The best fringe I ever had was in two thousand eighteen, and I was pleased as punch because I broke even and paid for some of my accommodation. Still lost money. But I was like, yes! It's a, a fucking weird game up there. You sort of can't win. Um, Amazing. <laughs> fucking amazing. I totally forgot about that, but it was I was there that, that year. The cock year. The cock year. Did, um, did anybody who was coming to see the shows at the Fringe, did anybody, obviously with a, you know, a, a name like Cunt and the Gang, You'd hope people would know what they're coming into. Did you ever get many walks out? Yeah. Walkouts of people being really offended. Yeah, I mean that—that's the surprising thing is, you know, you get two or three songs in, and you'd see people. You know, the thing when someone's offended and they do this, and then the arms just kind of get higher and higher, and because because of the way, I mean, I'm sure I'm sure it's the same with stand up. Is you you uh, the way you work your set is you put a bit of gentle stuff in to get people on board. And oh, then, you build to the good yeah, stuff. Yeah, and, and then at the end, you can kind of take them on a ride they weren't really expecting. <laughs> but I, I was sort of finding three or four songs in, you'd see people that were just like looking really irate. 
And so I, I just started at the start of the at the start of the show is just basically saying, some of you aren't gonna like this. Here's your disclaimer. You've got three songs to fuck off. And and if at the end of it you're still there with a face like a slapped ass, I'm gonna single you out. And so uh people would kinda after one or two songs get up and, and walk out and, and you'd see some people in the crowd going a bit boo and I'm like, No, no, that's fine. <laughs> They, you know they can go now, but if they're still here in in a song's time, then they're gonna fucking. So get you give it. A, you you got a three song amnesty. Yeah, three song amnesty basically. Right, but after that, after that, did yeah. anyone with the arms folded stick around and and? No, once once you once you do the amnesty, people kind of understand understand what it is. But it's it's it, it, that's the thing with with the fringe because I was doing the free gigs. People don't always have that investment. Of, of if they've although you know I went to, went to paid gigs and saw the same thing happen you know people kind of walking out and and heckling and disgruntled but the free gigs I think if you've got a group of like six or seven people on a Friday night and a couple of them don't like it it might be that you know why you've got people in yeah yeah it's, the Edinburgh can be amazing can't it but ultimately there's a lot of people just trying to find a show that makes sense at that time and yeah. they look around Cunt and the gang well, maybe it's some sort of challenging gritty poetry <laughs> <laughs> sort of is four songs in <laughs> I used to be a paper boy <laughs> <laughs> the weird thing is you could you could never really predict who it was going to be because I, I remember one night like you know looking at the front row and there's this old couple of you know 70 odd and uh, next to them like a, a young lad and his and his girlfriend and you just think, how are these fucking old dears going to cope with this? And, you know, a couple of songs in, you'd be halfway through Chips or Tits or Gentleman's Wash. They'd be sat there laughing like a drain, and the the, the bloke and his girlfriend are having a row about it, you know. <laughs> uh, you you oh, can't right, predict okay. who's going to like it and who's, who's not. You can never judge a cunt by its cover. Is that what you say? <laughs> quiet, quiet. Yeah, right, okay, cool. Yeah, that is, that is true. Do you remember at the live show, uh, Carl, when I was like, I sort of took the piss out of some... I think I I took the piss out of like an older couple, and they were one of the biggest laughers as well. Like, oh yeah, they were like seventies. Like they were really into it. Yeah, uh, it was, I fucking love it. Good on them because a good sense of humour is not always about your age, isn't it? No, it's not, is it? Because you know, you you think like people that were punks are in their sixties now. So this is what I always say to people: don't feel sorry for old ladies that are walking around Marks and Spencers in their slippers because in wartime they were just sucking all the cocks. <laughs> I feel so sad that you've not met Adam. <laughs> <laughs> really? I yeah, we've had that conversation. I, I just think, I think he might have given you a little fucking round of applause. That. <laughs> Lad, exactly. <laughs> we'll meet again. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where. Uh, not in me, I. Uh, um, amazing. Is there anything more you want to add, Barry, before we uh, I want to, I want call to, a break? Because this one's been meaty. Before we have the break, I, um, I just want to ask you what's on... What's on the horizon? What's coming next? Well, um, the next thing was going to be I'm back up the fringe this year with Shannon Matthews, the musical. <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh, um, I hope so, Shannon Matthews is. So I wrote Shannon Matthews, the musical, like <laughs> in 2009, 2010, and no one was ever going to put it on. So I recorded it as like an audio st- musical <laughs> look at Benny's feet it's, again Carl it's really catchy there, <laughs> there's one song called Shannon Ain't Dead She's Under My Bed right which is a, it's a proper toe tapper honestly home. by the way if you've not if you don't know the story that we're talking about <laughs> oh just pause have a little Google and come back bring her home <laughs> God, my beautiful princess daughter but Yes, yeah, so so that's that's coming to the fringe this year. I I never thought anyone would ever put it on, but uh, yeah, a theatre company from Yorkshire are putting it on. <laughs> that's amazing. Um, so that that was going to be the next thing, but um, I think uh, I, I discovered it's the Queen's Platinum Jubilee this year, and obviously the Sex Pistols had their thing in '77 where they released "God Save the Queen" to coincide with the Queen's Platinum Jubilee celebrations. So I'm going to do something to coincide with the Queen's Platinum Jubilee celebrations in uh, at the end of May. Wow. It's not going to be a celebration, though, is it? Yeah. My, my thing. Yeah. Well, I don't, I, I I, I'm a, getting the vibe. It's not going to be. Uh, 
positive towards. <laughs> I just, I was just are you allowed to say you are? I mean, I, I'm toying with a couple of ideas at the moment, but there is one of her sons in particular who seems to be in, oh, the, really? news, <laughs> in, yeah. in the news quite a lot. I wonder which one that is. <laughs> Have you ever spent Christmas <laughs> on Pedo Island? <laughs> yeah, I think uh, I'm a big I'm a big fan of Prince. Um, um, right, well, good luck, mate. And uh, I will look forward to that. And we will not even attempt to challenge. No, and we'll, we'll get behind you this time. Yeah, like, we'll Cause Barry was like, cunt in the gang for Christmas number one. We were like, you fucking rat. I know I got all of the have a word fans having a go at me. <laughs> for for platinum Jubilee. Rats. No, cunt they, in the gang for platinum on side. Jubilee number one. They'll, they'll, they'll be on side now. I definitely. think next Christmas, I, I, I'd, I'd, love, I'd like to see you both do your own thing. But then I think like a collaboration of have a word and cunt in the gang fans could definitely I, make a push for number one. I just give us a couple of years. I've got PTSD from Christmas number one. <laughs> If I have to think about Mariah Carey's big sloppy tits getting number five without selling <laughs> one fucking record, that game is broken. Look at you Wan. nearly won it. Wan were number three. Yeah. Oh, great. Wan's Good. <laughs> Good. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry, I forgot that you've got... Sorry, sorry, lads. Um, uh, where uh, can we find... Because a lot of our lot will be, I think, intrigued, to say the least. Where can we... We usually do this at the end, but I feel after talking about what you're up to next this year... Uh, where can we find you? Where can we? My my my, my central. Um, I didn't turn my fucking phone off. For Don't worry about it. My, my central website is katg.co.uk, and there's links to all my socials from there. I'm on Twitter and Facebook and all that sporadically and YouTube. Nice. But yeah, katg. Was that your little? UK. What was that little? Was that your phone going off? It's like, oh, that was a little. Oh fucking hell! I'm playing the game. Ting. Yeah. <laughs> that was a little cunt alarm. Like ting. <laughs> you fucking sell out. Every time. Ting. Every time you try and promote something. Yeah, yeah. Little, that's a little bit of your soul going. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh god, With you're a, a little bit Mark less coil. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's have a quick break and then we'll come back with some bits. Wag wag lids, it's Dan. Hope you're enjoying today's episode. Do us a favor, if you're watching on YouTube, like the video, subscribe. If you're listening, follow us on all socials at Have a Word Pod. Tell a friend, do something, help spread the word. Also, I'm on tour next year. If you want to come and see me do stand up, get tickets at dannightingale.com. Appreciate you. You're a good egg. You're a good lid. Back to the episode. Uh, right, final section. <laughs> I'm going to whack out the Have A Words now. Everyone knows the score, don't they? Uh, Have A Words. Have A Word with either me or my missus, please. My daughter, who's 12, has just run up almost £60 extra on her phone bill from sending gifts, emojis, and pictures to her mates through normal messaging as we took WhatsApp and all forms of free messaging off her phone as she was being stupid with them, doing prank calls and being in group chats where they're absolute cunts to each other. I've said she should pay the 60 quid back from her pocket money each week to teach her a lesson, but my missus says no, as she wasn't aware that you get charged sending anything other than texts on SMS. So a disgruntled dad is asking for our judgment here. How old is she, though? Uh, she's 12. <clears throat> the she's... shit I did when I was, like, 16 with pranks. Right. 12 is fine. 12 is fine, but it's 60 quid and he's not happy. I think that fuckwit has got to pay the 60 quid himself for leaving her with the phone. If you're going yeah, yeah. to punish her, don't leave her with the phone. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. yeah. I agree. It is a little bit frightening. But the same- as I've got a daughter and she's going to have a phone and like, I don't know. Have you- At what age though? If you've got a phone, should you not know... Yeah, then I'm sort of, sort of siding with you. Have you got kids? Have you are you are you a responsible? No, I've got a four 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 five year old daughter, and she's going on like twenty five. And I Has she got a phone? She, no, but it's going to be a matter of time because you try and be a parent that's not on the phone, and then these guys are WhatsApping me, and then I'm like, <laughs> oh shit, let's check the patron again, and then you're like, and then you do the loop, and she's like, daddy you on your phone, and then she wants to be on the phone on YouTube Kids. It's so tempting for them to want to be on this phone. Everything's on there, though, so you're looking at it the whole fucking time. Yeah. I, I hate being on the phone, but I'm on there the whole fucking time because yeah. everything's on there. And I know time. she's going to get to 10, 11 years. I don't know even when kids are meant to get phones. You get kids' phones now. So my niece, who is seven, got a kid's phone for Christmas. And right. it's essentially just like there's one app and it's a it's a, it's an instant messenger app. So another kid, like her friends in school have got it. It's easy to monitor. So they can practice bullying. 
Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. It's but there's no you in, build up to it. But there's know. no internet. There's no. You can't access anything bad. But you can message each other. You see, I'm right. kind of on the side a little bit. That sounds bit. good. Can I? Can I digress? <laughs> That's what Dan's on now. He can't message anyone. He's just on there looking at numbers and shapes. Circle. Uh, I don't think it's necessarily her fault because, like, the say she didn't know that you get charged by sending these messages. So I don't, I don't blame the daughter. I don't think she should have to pay it back. No. I think it's the person who gave it. But at the same time, <laughs> I would like to put forward a motion. You fucking changed. I'd like to ban gifts. And right. th- like, you know, when you get gifts on page, has anyone ever laughed at a gift? Oh, we've got gifts, buddy. I know you have, because I got fucking spammed with all of them when I said, <laughs> buy a single, right? So I got about 400 gifts of you looking like that at me, right? Yeah. <laughs> I have to admit, like, I don't mind a gif, Ugh. but if it was charging me anything, I <laughs> would never use a gif. 50p no. to watch that woman go, with a bit of coffee. Oh, fuck off. Do you know, Barry, that we contact each other via a phone a lot and I'm now going to gif the shit out of you? <laughs> I'm going to try and communicate solely in gifs. <laughs> Hearing his 50p to send a gif makes me want to spit my coffee out. It does. <laughs> Con, did you ever do any pranks when you were little? Surely you did, if you've grown up to be a prankster. What, on, on the phone? No, like just in... Uh, were you a prankster when you were a kid? Uh... <sighs> I just like I, I like I like silly I, I like silly fucking pranks. So my uh, my long suffering girlfriend uh, hates horror films, right? But I always used to make her watch horror films, and then at the end of the horror film, I'd always do something just just fucking ridiculous. So we watched this film, Creep. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, that's the one I lent you. That's the one I scared the shit out of Vicky with. Yeah, I lent you. Yeah. It's a quite a scary. Horror film. It's all set on the London Underground, and, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, it's and there's some film. weird, tortured, fucked up thing that's yeah, had experiments. He's been experimented on, and he's and got the German all girl gets hearing. drunk after a night out, falls asleep, and she falls asleep, and she's locked in the underground, and it's haunting her. Yeah. So, so what I done after <laughs> after watching that was I went and got under the covers wearing a bold, <laughs> yeah, bold head wig. <laughs> And then when my girlfriend came through from doing her nightly ablutions and pulled the covers back, I went, oh! Like and she collapsed like if someone had taken all the bones out of her body. <laughs> See, I love that that kind of prank. He's my, that's my kind of prank. So as long t- as it's not done on me. We're obviously. talking... For, yeah, yeah, yeah. I love pranks. As long as no cunt does them on me. When we lived together in uh, Manchester, we two years, I think, we were there, weren't we? Yeah. In a uh, rented house. Barry's OCD made it look like... For every day we we of the seven hundred days we lived there, every day looked like the day we just moved in. As it should. No, there wasn't anything ever. It was like he was trying to just like I don't know, get rid of evidence. It was it was like we. <laughs> I, I've never lived anywhere like it. You're like, where's the coffee table? But I was like, it was in the wrong place, and it's just. Like, you clean to the point, everything just disappeared. Yeah. Like, I actually started feeling bad because it, it was like I was using your illness to just not do any washing up. You're like, well, I've made pasta, and if I leave the plate there, I will wash it up eventually. But I know full well that within 18 minutes, Barry will have huffed his way down the stairs <laughs> and done it for me. It's, I, win, it's win-win then, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Well, not for me, because I'd be there going, to fucking cunts, I can't wait to move out of here. I fucking hate this house. <laughs> so we watched uh, Creep, me and my girlfriend Vicky, who I absolutely loved to bits. Thought she was fucking great. She was a little Geordie girl. And uh, I thought it'd be funny because she was like, hey, I'm dead scared of horror films. And I was like, oh, brilliant, because I'm not. And I think it'd be fun to make you jump. So about three quarters of the way into the film, it's really getting, she was like, oh, I, I, I was like, I need the toilet. And she was like, right. It's middle of winter. It's pitch black outside. It's one of these rented properties that hasn't got curtains in the living room because Barry probably fucking binned them. <laughs> <laughs> Dirty, dusty things in the fucking skip. And uh, uh, instead of going upstairs, I pretended to go upstairs to the toilet. I went out the kitchen door, round the back. And obviously at night, you can't really see what's going on in the garden, can you? You can just see a reflection of the living room and just waited for a pause. And she was there like nervously waiting. I fucking rattled the window. <laughs> and I thought she'd like go, hey, oh my God, you're so 
so god fucking hell. She cried so much. <laughs> like, I thought she'd be like, oh god, you made me jump and let's go and have great sex. She was really upset and I got no sex. Missed jobs of situation. Abs- absolutely yeah. <laughs> fully deserved. I know you're crying now, but can we bang later? <laughs> no, I am a twat. You're right. Um, right, so in this situation, Barry, let, let's have you as... We've got the, the gavel there. Do you want to sit in judgment? All I'm saying is, 12-year-old... Like, I've got a f- near five-year-old, and she's pretty fucking smart. She's already working things out. 12, these aren't fucking little kids. Like, is there going to be any recompense for this £60? Or is it just like, oh, you've made a mistake? Because I don't want to work it like this with my daughter when it gets to it. I want some sort of paying back from the pocket money. I think, would it not be better if the dad did like a debt collection company thing? Where... Broke her legs. (laughs) Right. (laughs) There's a fucking proper northeast thing. Yours, £20. Throw off a car park. Or a knee. (laughs) (laughs) Very nice. Good reference. What about if it was like, listen, it's a sixty pound debt, but if you if we call it twenty, you can pay in installments now. If you pay in the next two weeks, it's half. <laughs> yeah, 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 like, like a, a parking park ticket. Yeah, um, yeah. I, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna judge this that she is ordered to pay twenty pounds of that sixty pound. Okay. Right. Considering she's a kid and she didn't know what she was doing, she'll learn a lesson, I suppose. Yeah. All right. But I'm on her side. I think. She's yeah. If she, even I if she's going to piss him off, then go for it. Because it's a mistake. Twenty quid, twenty quid when you're twelve is a lot of fucking money in it. Yeah. Plus, I was I'm old, so I feel like twenty quid's fucking load. Um, this next one's uh, relationship based. All right, lids, need you to have a word with me. I dated this girl for a while. By the way, cunt, we've got a. Uh, do you remember sad song? Na, 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 na. Yeah. I know you can't hear it. We're playing that underneath because we're. Oh, can I? Just really like to hammer home the emotion. Good, babe. All right, Lids, need you to have a word with me. I dated this girl for a short while. Everything was going great. We were really into each other. Then she ended things suddenly when I met her family, saying she didn't want a relationship and wouldn't let me have the conversation to clarify our feelings. This happened a few months ago, and I've dated multiple girls since, but she's still the only one in my head. Do I just need to bury it and move on, or do I owe it to myself to give it a second chance? That's from Tom. I think we're missing a bit of the story there. Go on. So he's saying that he met the parents. Yeah. And all of a sudden she's not interested. Yeah. What happened to the parents? Yeah, what did he do? Yeah, he's yeah, yeah, yeah. He's done something there, hasn't he? Mm. Right. Said something racist. Said something racist. racist. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> what would that be, Carl? Just out of interest. <laughs> Imagine what you could say to your in-laws. All right. <laughs> Good. I'll be... Sh- we have got Cunt and the gang on <laughs> you the You asked couch, me what he could have said. And you're the one. I didn't that say it. Be like, Jesus. I never thought I'd look to Cunt and the gang to be on the, to, to be on the, to be on the right side of not getting cancelled. Um, yeah. I, I don't think we need... If, if Tom's not telling us the story, we're not getting the story. He needs to follow up with what he did. I think basically you've got a nasty case of the in-laws are cunts. I, I, I think we like need them. to hear from the in-laws. Can we get the in-laws email? Oh, because they in? sound like Have A Word fans, don't they? Get her mum and dad, who are probably patrons of Have A Word, to message in. There might um, be cunt fans that might be listening in. Right. Just yeah, on this yeah, episode. Yeah. You never know. Never judge people. They're probably going to don't like him. There's something about him and she's going, okay, because she's a spineless got, bitch. Tom's got something of the night about him. Yeah. Big and serial killer, eh? <laughs> yeah. 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 I'm just, uh, that's the vibe I'm getting re- reading between the lines. And so... The- <laughs> Poor old Tom's getting levelled here. <laughs> Tom, Tom's the only one that actually listens to the podcast and we've all turned him. He's done something. Why does Tom keep himself to himself then? If yeah. he hasn't got something to hide. Oh, yeah. 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 I don't care if Tom's done anything wrong. I don't care what happened at that meeting, but I don't, if you've got feelings for this girl, you need to jog the fuck on because having a partner whose parents are a cunty, annoying, or hate you is just such a terrible thing to sign up for. I don't know where you are with your uh, partners and their fucking parents, but my, my, my mother-in-law is so sound. Same. If I'd have met her quicker... 
when I met Laura, the whole thing would have been expediated. I would have been like, oh, I really fancy you, Laura. And we've got a great sense of humor. She'd introduced me to Jude, the most chilled out mother-in-law fucking ever. We'd have been engaged and married even quicker. And that was on fast track because I'm a bored looking nonce. That is, <laughs> this is how sound my mother-in-law is. She borrowed my laptop, went on to Google and was looking for a website or was searching something that started with P. <laughs> I hadn't cleared my history. All of the Pornhub suggestions, because my laptop's like, right, Dan, we don't usually do this in the afternoon, but no worries. I've got all your saved Pornhub searches. It must have just gone, filth, 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 filth. And she just literally looked side to us and went, oop, and then carried on. What a fucking trooper. Why, yeah, but why wouldn't you do Get that? yourself well, a mother-in-law. She never said anything. No, she's so... Just made a little whoop. She, she just went, oop. Everyone watches <laughs> As in, porn. There we go. Really? Everyone watches porn. I mean, I'd, I'm glad it was just a little whoop. I'm glad she didn't just start reading out. Oh, oh lesbian bukkake. How oh, fair do What if she started to recommend it? Oh, I don't like that one. <laughs> oh, it's God. Quirking. Must be. <laughs> All right. <laughs> 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 A team rotters squirting on a 14 year old Japanese boy. <laughs> no, I don't think she's seen that one. Uh, yeah, the sound and then there's worrying, isn't there? Is that the beat, is that the beat side to pay for? Boy? <laughs> yeah. if, if my mother in law was like, oh, these are boring. You want to try this? Um, you, you, you need sound in laws, don't you? I don't know any relationship you've been in. It's going to be so much harder if you have to have tea around the house of a pair of twats yeah. every other Sunday. So, Tom. He's had a lucky escape. Yeah. He They've, has, He'll yeah. live to murder again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just wait till an e-scooter battery's running out. <laughs> From before. Um, one more, and then we will bounce. Uh, this is from an anonymous uh, correspondent. Um, have you ever developed an unusual fetish or kink? I think mine is getting out of hand, and I want to know if it's okay or if I need to seek help. So here it goes. It all started about a week uh, beforehand. Oh, it all starts about a week beforehand. You want to start masturbating about three times a day, and when you're about to come, you have to stop and really blue ball yourself. Then you want to start eating magnesium supplements and cloves of garlic, as many as you can take. After about a week of this, I booked myself a cheap local flight, normally to Poland or Bulgaria. Then I tip... <laughs> what? <laughs> then I tip off the airline saying someone is smuggling drugs and give my description. As I walk through the airport, I get stopped at... Nah. <laughs> <laughs> let, let him finish. Because if it was bullshit, I love the fact that he's gone to this much fucking trouble to write out. As I walk through the airport, I get stopped at security and I get taken into the back office. As soon as my pants are down, I'm practically quivering. Has this got a vibe? It's a wank mag story. <laughs> <It's> a <laughs> Now all the wank mags have gone out of business. Uh, a, a, and it would, they always had titles, didn't they? Osama Wank Laden. Uh, um, right, hang on, let me, let me finish it, because if it is bullshit, it's got to be new. As soon as my pants are down, I'm practically quivering. The second the officer puts their finger in my ass, I just literally explode. Gallons and gallons have come. The magnesium supplements only add to the amount as it's splattering all over the room and staff. The officer normally starts barking, barking because of the smell, or barking because of the smell from the garlic. I'm not gay, but I figured you can do this about three or four times before you're barred from the airport. <laughs> <laughs> Mic drop. This person has an interest in imagination. Amazing. Is it? It's got to be yeah, bullshit. It's got, is it going to be bullshit? <laughs> yes. But you know what? It, <laughs> it does have the fit. The There's a level of detail in there that makes me think it's for real. <laughs> yeah. Really? The extra little thought he's the, made. The, ma the magnesium sulfate or whatever it yeah. was. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm. When, when you've, you've done a lot of research, <laughs> if, if, if it's not true... He wants to do it. He's going to do it at some point. Yeah. There was, there was That's not Tom again, is it? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I told this story in front of my future in-laws, and they didn't like it. Um, uh, it. The practically quivering is straight out 
of the made up bullshit story from yeah. Wank Mags. It Straight is. out but of there Russell, was, yeah. There was, a, there was a few lines that I really think that showed that it wasn't one of them because the magnesium supplements only add to the amount. There was, <laughs> there was never that level of Holland and Barrett detail <laughs> in like Razzle. Um, I mean, any kink or fetish that I've That's got. That's not a kink. No, no, it's not. Any no. kink or fetish I've got. I, I, it's never even going to be like. What, I mean, if Adam was here, it'd be like, wow, like uniforms and tennis players. I think if your kink and fetish involves a passport and a fucking if you're getting minivan by, to the airport, if you're getting fingered by passport security and your kink, then you've gone too far. If it involves a man, I mean, and you've lived by that for a long time. <laughs> you? If your kink involves air travel or yeah. anything to do with an airport, magnesium or magnesium. <laughs> well, come on, not anything to do with an airport. If if Mild you have to, if you have to fly anywhere for your kink, you're in bother. You're on. It's, it's a slippery slope. You're going to end up unless you're gonna, unless you're going to end up in a cell with glitter. Yeah, <laughs> unless it was Gislaine Maxwell asking, and then I'd be like, oh, book me some tickets, oh, Gislaine. Gislaine. I'm never going to change it. I don't care what her name is. How'd you say it? Gislaine. Gislaine. Oh, Gislaine. How have you been Gilaine. saying it? Gislaine, is it? Gislaine. Uh, Gislaine. <laughs> well, I've not said it very much. Sounds so funny. That was it? the flight path they talked to Peter Wyland, the Gislaine. Am I wrong? <laughs> Am I wrong? She's Gislaine Maxwell's pretty fit. No, she had a weird... I literally just said the same thing. No, she's yeah. got a stupid little bowlhead. An air cut. She'll have a Karen bowlhead. I think it's the, the fact face. she's a sex trafficker. Yeah, it, it adds a little. Doesn't tell me on that. A je ne sais quoi. Yeah. It doesn't. A je ne sais quoi. A je, a je ne sais quoi. <laughs> Fuck it, and I hope she dies in the next week. Cool. Is that going to be our Christmas number one for next <laughs> yeah, year? Yeah. <laughs> Fuck Gislaine, and I hope she dies in the next week. Yeah. What, she wearing will. a gilet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wearing a gilet for Gislaine. <laughs> I'd smash the flaps off her. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I think she's fit. I don't care. I like it. It's a little bit. Uh, I know she's a sex trafficker, but she could sex traffic me. It's it doesn't work as well. Bit, it's not a little bit. She's naughty. not going to be in prison for sex trafficking for bald 40 year olds from Preston, is she? If anything, it's like charity work. <laughs> That's my swimming with dolphins. Um, uh, so I, I don't know, man. Like, I'm not going to kink shame you. Old fucking easy jet here thinks you're a pervert just for fucking having a travel pillow. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I may be a bit old school and traditional in some of my values, but that sounds either bullshit or just far too complicated. It's yeah. a- I like a vagina, a working <laughs> vagina, a phone that doesn't talk back too much. Cracking said to tits, Gromit. Um, yeah, I, I don't know, man. I, like, genuinely, I'm the, I'm the in-house perv. But he, like, yeah. That's wild, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. The, the ret- you know, sometimes when you've cracked one out, you feel like a bit like, oh, What happens then? Yeah, you have to get a return flight. Yeah, well, it, yeah, well, yeah what what's the do next then? move? Does he get Can they just the release him? Yeah. Well, I'd, I'd suggest wet wipes initially, and then, <laughs> yeah, and then the, the flight of shade. Sounds like a full clean-up team. <laughs> <laughs> 500 pound clean up team please <laughs> anyway that was from Sting uh, <laughs> uh, let's call it a pod um, Cunt what a fucking treat mate thanks for having us thanks for entertaining our bollocks at the end as well it's been great hearing your story everyone go and have a look uh, katg.com co.uk Don't co.uk for someone else that keep it local <laughs> don't yeah. go there Katga Katga and I'm going to put that there. Don't worry about it. It's fine. Yeah, I meant to And if it. you're on Patreon and you love subscribing to Dan and the boys' bullshit, uh, then there's another Patreon, uh, forward slash Barry Dodds, which is full of ghost hunting and comedy stuff and movie stuff and yes. all that sort Watch of carry-on. And more cunt. There's a, there's a cunt interview just gone on there as well. Yeah, so. Barry's works harder on his Patreon than anyone I know. The amount of content <laughs> is phenomenal. You really... Uh, Graft at it, obviously. Oh, the pay- Dan's on it, but it's Finn who probably gives you the feedback on what's Finn's on. Finn's on it, yeah. No, you were, you've, like, I am on the Patreon, though. There is a are interview. You? There's an interview on there, isn't there? No, he means, are you, are, are are you, you a, a Patreon? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> Where can you get the ghost on film, buddy? Is it Amazon? 
Uh, oh, the Parapod movie. Yeah, oh, um, sorry, the Parapod movie. Uh, yeah. The Parapod movie. Uh, the Parapod, a very British ghost hunt, is available on iTunes, Sky Store, Amazon, and Rakuten. And um, me and Finn have both seen it, and it's very, very, very good. Thank you. Finally, we did raise some money for charity, and um, it's not that we fell short. We didn't know what we were doing, but... A lot of listeners have emailed asking if they could make a, a, a contribution to the charities. They were Zoe's Place, the Baby Hospice, and one of our listeners, Gina, her her daughter beat eye cancer, childhood eye cancer, and asked to be one of the charities. Now, we did it as a fuck around, and we've ended up, we've, it's going to have raised a couple uh, of grand for each of those charities. It would be nice to just throw a few more quid their way. We're not going to do it till the end of January. So till the end of January, we've got a couple of Just Giving pages up and they're available in the links for the YouTube and the audio. This is absolutely only if you want to, because a couple of people have asked, if you want to make a wee donation, we're going to give them the money at the end of January. Um, and obviously, uh, yeah, appreciate you. Thanks yeah. very much for listening. Thanks so much for coming up. Thanks for having us. Barry, thanks for being a, a standing Thank guest. One of the one of the very few that have done it. It's been a pleasure. Thanks, Lids. Wag Cheers, wag. Boys. See you later. Big guy.